Hi, I'm Rusty Dog. <coughs> Welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy the live stream. Good greetings, everyone. Rusty Dog here. Welcome to Elite Dangerous again. Yes, sir. We're back for the third day in a row. <laughs> I'm on a roll, guys. <clears throat> okay, so we're back with Rusty Dog. Um, Commander Rusty Dog, that is. And we're going to be pushing quite a bit in this stream. Um, and then we'll get some exploration done. Yeah, I told her a story and uh, didn't make the end. Okay, so we better get up. How are you guys all doing today? Hope everything's good with you guys. Uh, right. <clears throat> Only three people, really? Wow. Um, let me just uh, check something out here, guys. One second. Only three. All right. <clears throat> Hey, understated. Just popped in. Oh, stay a while, man. Stay a while. Commander Budman is with us anyway. Commander Budman, hey. Welcome, sir. Welcome, welcome. Uh, hope you don't mind me uh, streaming for three days in a row and taking up your time. <laughs> Commander Steve Zodiac is with us. Hi, Steve. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Andy K is with us. Hi, Andy. Uh, let's uh, see, uh, understated as well. Yes, hi, understated. Um, it has been a while. Simondo Psycho. Hi, Simondo. Welcome to you, sir. And Triple Oracle has joined us as well. 07. And Loot, the coffee guy. Right, guys. So, I have a small plan. It might not go to plan, but I have a small plan. And something up my sleeve. I have something up my sleeve, guys. Where's my sleeve? I can't even see my sleeve from here. Yeah, it's up there. So, we're about to leave the, I think it's TDVC or TDVS? Uh, Spartacus? Uh, TMCV, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> TMCV Spartacus. We're about to leave this fleet carrier now. I tried to rank up in exobiology before we left here, but clearly it's not going to happen. So we're going to say bye-bye. But before we do that, <coughs> Spartacus, our uh, fleet carrier, is going to carry out a quick operation on my anaconda. Because I'm just changing something. So let's have a look. Let's see if we can find the way out through here, right? Eddie Ryan. Hi, Eddie. Good evening. Magic tricks. Yes. I have an ass up my... Uh, an ace up my sleeve. <laughs> I don't know what how this is going to work, so we'll have to see. We'll see it together, as we always do. Right. Thank you, Spartacus, for being my home for a couple of weeks. And uh, take a last look at this, guys. Take a last look at this anaconda, because you're not going to see it like this anymore. All right, Annie. You've been a good ship. Don't freak out, guys. Don't freak out. Odyssey looks insane. Is it worth getting? Yes, it is. And especially if you're getting it for a Steam account, because then you can get it on cdkeys.com for like under £10 if you're in, in Britain. And then it's a no-brainer. Absolutely no-brainer. In fact, if you look at my previous couple of videos, understated, where I'm using John Beamer, I've restarted my... It's done, I've done a commander wipe there and started from scratch in in um, Odyssey. So, yes, definitely 100% worth it. Um, yeah. And if, like I say, if it's for a Steam account, it's a no-brainer. Because CD keys have it on offer. So go for it. GTX, hola, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Alright guys, so before we lift off, this is the only opportunity I'm going to get to do this. Unless I dock at another fleet carrier. 
So we're popping into carrier services and we're going to make a change. We're not going to re-outfit. I think I'm pretty happy with the outfitting. I don't think there's... I know there's been a couple of times where I've left here and thought, oh damn, I wish I'd fitted such and such on the ship. I mean, there's nothing, right? I have... Oh, I've got a military compartment there. What can I use on that? Oh yeah, whole reinforcements, guardian shields. Oh, okay. Guardian shield might come in handy, but it's going to put extra weight on the ship, and I, I really don't want to do that. No, I think... I think we're good here. I know there's been times when I've come away and thought, oh, I forgot to change this, I forgot to change that. But I can't remember what it was. Oh, I know what it was. It was the front end of the ship. It wasn't it wasn't outfitting. All right. So guys, we're going here into livery. And which is it without? Oh, it's a bit more expensive. I think it's about 30 pounds or something. Understated, yeah. Watching from the wild, eh, GTX? What does that mean? From the wild. Okay. Take one good look at this anaconda, guys. It's about to change. I was... I, I couldn't resist temptation, so you probably know what I'm doing here. Ship kits. Ship kits, guys. What am I doing? You know what I'm doing. So, let's start at the front, which would be bumper. And we have the Anaconda Hazard. Yes, I bought the Hazard ship kit. I, I, I had some arcs in my thing account, so I just had to top it up a little. I had to do it, guys. I had to, I had to do it. Um, oh, triple. No, don't get confused. This is the Rusty Dog account. This isn't the John Beamer account. No, this is, uh, this is my other account. <clears throat> Right, so it's one, it's one piece. So you can't, there's no multiple pieces here. It's one hazard piece. Like in here, you've got bumper four, bumper three, blah, 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 blah. Like the Raider, you've got a choice of three bumpers, right? But this is just the one kit. And you can see what it does. It puts, it puts these things on the side. We're just going to go full hazard and see what it looks like um, with this livery. We'll take a look at the hazard liveries, but uh, they're all right. I know, no, it was expensive, but the thing is, Rusty Dog had some arcs in the account. I had a, I had a few thousand arcs in the account already, so I only had to do a little top up, you know, so I didn't pay the full, the full thing. All right, so we've got the hazard bumper. John Beamer can't do it though, no chance. Uh, right, so we've got the bumper. Let's go now for wings. And we've got the hazard wings. Oh. Yeah, it says top... I wish they'd... That's going on at the back. We won't be able to see this in its full glory, I guess, until we get out there. But I want to see what this looks like when the lights are on. This is what I'm really curious about. So the tail, then, is... That's Raider. Oh, do we not have one? Ooh, guys, we don't have a hazard tail. So you only get three ship kit parts. Okay, well, I'll leave the tail that I've got on now then. Oh, I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. Okay, spoiler. That's this top one, the hazard spoiler. There it is, with those big two tin cans on the top. That's the big one. Okay. But now that's on, if I go back to bumper, right, now you can see. So, can I, can I turn the lights on? Oh man, mucho brightness. Okay, let's go outside. I'm hoping this is going to be good for when I'm landing on dark planets, you know, so that I can see... Whoa, look at the underneath here. Hoo-hoo! Mama. 
Let's see if we can get over here. I want to take a look at those lights. They look blinding. But this is what I was after. Okay, so there's lights underneath. Oh, that's going to be handy. And I think there should be some on top. Although we're not going to get to see it properly until I can jump, I think. Once I get onto a planet surface and we can jump. Because the, the, the lights are back there, you see? The lights are back on the ship there. And here, you see two here and two at the back. So we've got four lights on the top and two on the bottom. How friggin' cool does this look? Yeah, Budman, li yeah, lights on the nose as well. So we've got, what, six extra lights? Oh, guys, this looks really nice. I love this bottom part. That looks really good. Let's, uh... <clears throat> takes me a while to run the length of the anaconda. I'll put my torch on. So we've got those things. I worked out, if you were to buy all the arcs for all seven ships that have the hazard kit you would have to spend 51 pounds to buy the to buy the hazard kit for all seven ships hmm so make of that guys what you what you think look at these though they look like electric pylon things linkster hi linkster how are you good sunday yes decent sunday so far <clears throat> and then we have this stuff, which looks straight out of Star Wars. This is very, very different, isn't it? But it really adds some detail to the ship. Man, oh man. And I'm telling you what, I want to keep the livery I have. I, I've seen the hazard liveries on preview. I haven't actually looked at them on my ship. I've seen them in a preview, and quite honestly... They're okay. There's one I like. The black the black and yellow one looks nice. The other one's a bit too colourful for my liking. But I think with this ship livery, with the iridescent gleam, this looks really nice. Good evening, Angry! And, yes, and Thor, and... <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, hazard ship kit for the Anaconda. Angry. All right, let's... Um, Let's have a look at the liveries that we have. I won't be changing it, but we're going to take a look anyway. I'm definitely keeping this livery because it's just, it's too good. So if we go into here, we're using iridescent gleam right now. Look, you can see all the four lights on the top of the ship now. So iridescent gleam, it's not going to change. Now, where are the hazard? So it's these, I believe. So this is the Anaconda Hazard const Construct, or Construct Construct. No matter the work, the Hazard Ship Kit is tough enough to get, get it done. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> not really, it's, yeah. So this isn't a bad looking one. Um, then we have the Demolish. I think this will be like great for, for mining, you know. <clears throat> Bronze or copper? Um, no, this is a... The Gleam one is kind of... The one I'm using is one that just... It's kind of an adaptive colouring, and, you know, it adapts to the colours around it, so my ship changes colour. Then we have support. I'm not into the pastel colour look thing, though. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if this is one, is it? Yep, Hazard Engineer. Oh God! Right, volume. <laughs> Thank you, Bud, for your kind donation of ten pounds. Oh. Replenishing the top off. Considerate hazard pay. Oh my God! How did you know? Yeah. Thank you, man. Hazard pay. I like it. Thank you, Budman. Thank you. I'll put that towards my um, my PC upgrade as well. Thank you so much. Hmm. Oh, yeah, and th thank you again to all those who have um, contributed to the PC upgrade. Um, I, have to, I need to thank Mark when I see him as well. Right, so this is my favourite one, I think, this one. I think this one looks good for, for what we need. Supervise. Yeah, for, for being out, I don't know, for mining or... This is the one I would use. If I had to pick any, I think I would probably pick this one. Or 
possibly that one. Demolish and supervise, I quite like. This one's okay. They've got a, a thing about having a yellow on the front there. Well, that's white now. White. Yeah, I don't know why. The yellow just seems out of place. You see here, it's it's white, red, and yellow, and here it's white, red, and yellow. <coughs> so, see, the, the galvanized cobalt with the previous, uh, like in Horizons, with the previous lighting used to look amazing. But here, in, in the hangar at least, yeah, not so much. Wow, 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 wow. Not, not my cup of tea. Crypsis blue. I didn't realize I had all these liveries. I've had this one on before, pulse blue. I think I had that for a little while. The novelty wears off after a while. Tactical graphite. So we'll go back to my gleam. What's this one? Azure. That's not too bad. That's chrome. Uh oh. Where's my gleam? Anaconda gold. <coughs> Can I just back out? I haven't applied any liveries. I'm just back out. Right, so iridescent gleam, and then we have... I'm surprised, though, that there's no... Let's see if we can change the tail here. That there's... What's, what's on here? Ah, okay, there, right. That's what we have on right now. That doesn't look too bad. I quite like the the fact that this one kind of fills out this back end a little bit more, uh, where this is without it, and then this is with it. It kind of fills that back end out, and I quite like that. And then this fills out the, the edges instead. It's a pity you couldn't like combine the two and just have them both on. Because they don't seem to interfere with each other. It's a pity you can't click and select both. And that one. That's nice because it tails the it tails the points off better. But yeah, we'll just keep it as it is. And we'll see what this looks like. Once we land on a dark planet or something and we need to project light out so we can see where we're going, this is where it should come into its own. So those are some damn bright lights. I always said I wanted brighter lights. Well, we got them. Functional. This is the first ship kit I've seen that's actually got some functional elements on them. <laughs> no, not out of place. Did I say out of place? Oh, yeah. The, the on the nose thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well, it, it, it was on that livery, though. There is a chrome for the DBX, isn't there? Okay, guys, so my plan is this. See what you guys think. We are currently 24,300 and a bit light years away from Sol, okay? So what I'd like to do is spend the first 30, maybe 40 minutes of the stream just jumping and scooping. Or, let me rephrase that, jumping and supercharging. If I make 17 neutron star jumps using the galaxy plotter, which I've already pre-plotted the course, it's telling me there are 104 jumps to get to Shinrata Desra. And it can be done in three hours. So if I, if I really wanted to, we could be back in Shinny at the, by the end of this stream. It could be done. But then it would be a very, very, very boring stream. So what I'd like to do is make 17 neutron star jumps with about one, two, three, four, five, four or five refuel stops at the same time, but each system will have a neutron star as well. And just jumping in, honking, jumping in, honking, supercharging, all that for 17 jumps. After the 17 jumps, we will then be Thank you, Linkster, for your kind crap. £64 and 49 pence super chat. Wow, thank you, Linkster. Oh my goodness. That stopped me in my tracks. 
Wow, thank you so much, man. Appreciate that massively. Big time. Wow. Thank you for your support, Linkster. Appreciate that so much. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Have a good day. I will. <laughs> I will. You kind of helped that along. Thank you so much, man. Man, that's good. Legendary status achieved. <laughs> you are now in amongst a group of many legends on this chat. Welcome. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, where was that? <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, man. Uh, okay, so I have to go. If, if I do 17 jumps, it'll put me within 20,000. So even Rusty's having another bar. Thank you, Linkster, for your kind 100 Canadian dollars super chat. There he goes. Now, why... I don't know why the alert isn't popping up. I fixed that. It did pop up, didn't it, before? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to apologise for caps now? <laughs> you can type caps all day. Yeah, so this will put us under... Uh, or close to under 20,000. We'll be around the 20,000 light years away. And then if, when we're jumping into these systems, if Elite Observatory Corps pipes up and says that there's anything interesting, then we'll stop and have a look. Um, so I think if we do that, are you guys okay with that? Um, my old card. I don't have an old card, Linkster. The 1080 got sold. Um, and... The 2080 Super is I'll, one I'll be reusing. Yeah. Uh, if, if Let's put it this way. If I had a 3080 Ti coming, I would, my 2080 Super, I would give it to you. I would just give it to you. I wouldn't even sell it. Um, but yeah, I have to stick with the 2080 Super apparently. <laughs> Okay, so if you guys are okay with this, we will launch and make a few neutron star jumps. Now, as I said, as we're doing this, if the if Elite Observatory Corps pipes up and says, hey, you know, there's something interesting here, then we'll stop and take a look. But I just want to make some progression at the beginning of the stream, maybe, you know, about 4,000 light years progression, and then four to 5,000, and then we'll just um, continue our exploration from there. But of course, like I say, if there's anything on the way. Yes, Linkster, me too, me too, definitely. You know, I was, I was looking up um, CPU versus GPU bottleneck calculator thing, and apparently they say that the... If you're using, like, you can compare it with general usage, you know, um, how much bottleneck you get with just general usage on the computer, but also when you're playing a game, which is you get different numbers, and it, you can pick the game you want to have it calculate with. And, of course, I chose Flight Sim because it's one of the most um, intensive, right? So it turned out that... Through normal usage, the Horizon, not Horizon, the the 5900X with a 2080 Super has a 15%, I think I've got my number right, a 15% CPU, no, GPU bottleneck. So the 2080 Super will be waiting around. No, it won't. <laughs> the 2080 Super will make will make the uh, CPU sit around because the, the CPU will be faster. But when you go into flight sim, apparently the calculator says that there is no bottleneck, that the that neither CPU or GPU are waiting for each other. It's like a 0% bottleneck, which is ideal. It's an ideal balance if you have... Um, a decent CPU and GPU because you could have a crap a crap graphics card and a crap CPU and still have a 0% bottleneck if they're both compatible with each other it doesn't mean you get great performance 
but you want to aim for around 5%, 5% um, bottleneck between each other, 5% or less. And then you've got a good CPU GPU balance. So I think my ideal balance with this CPU is a 3080 Ti or a 3080, I think. 3080 Ti, I think, is the gives a bit of CPU, GPU overhead. GPU, yeah, it has to be GPU. <clears throat> but as I'm already getting massive bottlenecks on my on my uh, CPU already because of the how because of how old it is compared to the graphics card. Just fitting the Ryzen in on its own without changing the graphics card is going to give me it's going to give the graphics card so much more performance because it's able to stretch its legs, you know. Uh, and it's all about achieving that balance, really. That's the secret. So let's have a look. Yeah, if you type in GP, if you type on, if you go into Google and go CPU versus GPU bottleneck calculator, you'll get the website and it'll. It'll ask you for your CPU, your GPU, your screen resolution, your what you intend to use it for, whether it's general use, CPU intensive stuff or GPU intensive stuff, and you can even compare it against the game. So it's it's quite good. How accurate the numbers are, I don't know. I'm I put faith in it. <laughs> Do you have to factor in RAM and disk in that mix as well? Um, yeah, I would say so. I would say you have to factor RAM in. I mean, they haven't, but yeah, I, I would say the speed of the RAM also contributes as well, for sure. And also having a like maybe an M.2 drive as well, so you don't have anything waiting around for access. You know, especially if you've got a game that's accessing the hard disk a lot. Flight Sim, not so much. Flight Sim is more bandwidth oriented, really. It's more like when you're playing, it's it's scooping data off the servers all the time as you're flying. So what you really need with Flight Sim, as well as a great graphics card and a great CPU, is a great, <laughs> it's a great internet connection. <laughs> yeah, so you can have your photogrammetry stuff as you're flying. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you can turn some of that stuff off. Right, I think I think the Elite Observatory Core is running. I'm just going to double check, make sure it's reading. Yes, it is. It's monitoring. So I've got Elite I've got Elite Observatory Core running. I've got Captain's Log running, and uh, did I just completely screw that up? Yeah, everything's running, so anything that's in here we should be... Anything that's in any of these systems should be picked up. Oh, I tell you what, now we're here, guys. Let's put... Look at that, the light's even lighting up the top of the ship here. Oh, this is a very different looking anaconda. <laughs> and the, uh, the, the extra apparatus that's on the ship gets color-coded to the livery. Okay, so that at least I know where it is now. Man, look at this thing. Crumbs, that's a screenshot. Okay, I need to go behind myself now. Captain's Log, yeah. It's a, it's a, Captain's Log is kind of a critical tool, I would say, if you're exploring, because it's like a journal. It's a journal of everything you've discovered on your trip. Yeah, if you just Google Captain's Log, you'll yeah, you'll find it. I don't. I can probably give you the link. I think it's Scary Gliders. I, I think I need to jump out of this system and back in again. Um, scarygliders.net, I think it is, or one word. I think the latest version is well. The version I'm running is 2.40. I think that might be the latest. Okay, this is going to cost me a little bit on fuel, but I'm going to have to do it this way. 
I've lost my way now. These, all these extra lights are going to drain my battery. Yes, Captain Slog. And he's been on a star date with somebody. I think her name was 32465.2. So I finished Boba Fett last night. I watched the last three episodes. It was good. I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. And I still say that little Groku is the cutest thing I've ever seen. It was kind of predictable, though. Some I'm not going to say I give it away, but some of the scenes that happened in that episode were very predictable. I predicted it like you know many scenes earlier. Oh, I, I thought to myself. Right, I know what's going to happen now. This is going to happen, this is going to happen, and uh, it's going to be under these circumstances. And true enough, that's exactly what it was. But nevertheless, it was very enjoyable. Yeah. Yes, White Dwarf Alert, I know. So using an Acer Nitro 1660 Super. 1660, weren't the 1660 um, TIs, didn't they have some pretty decent power on them, as I recall? Obi-Wan was good, yeah, and I think it was Angry Citizen, but it might have been another, another person as well that was telling me to make sure to watch Obi-Wan, sorry, to watch Boba Fett immediately after The Mandalorian, um, and of course yeah, it made sense to do that because they kind of intertwined the two series. So it, it, I'm glad I did that. Yeah, yeah, and Obi Wan was great. I, I enjoyed that. That little girl that played Princess Leia was amazing. <laughs> she was great. You could just see her being little Leia, that fearless little kid with a bit of attitude. I thought she was great. I thought she was brilliant. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, Angry says, with regard to the John Beamer reset, are you planning on shortcutting his progress with donations from experienced commander accounts? Oh yeah, I'm open for that. Donations with uh, materials to help me progress on the engineers. Why not? Hey, it's part of the gameplay, right? So there's no reason not to include that. So yeah, cross help from from other new. Yeah, if anyone has a new. If anyone's got a new account on Odyssey, and maybe even if you're a newbie and you want to join um, John Beamer on a stream, um, just pipe up, let me know, and we, we'll arrange it. Uh, or even if you're a veteran player, if you're playing Odyssey and you want to join John Beamer, um, I will give priority to members and patrons and whatnot, but otherwise the invite is open to everybody. Yeah. I think, Angry, maybe me and you should open the floor up and do it between us the first time and then and then have some, like, especially, especially if it's a newbie, because maybe they can learn as they play. Uh, I will I will do that after the stream, um, unless you need me to do it earlier, Commander Classified, yes. But I, oh, the DMs you sent me last night. Oh, yeah, no, I saw them. Thank you so much, man. Some awesome in, uh, information there. Yes. Um, yeah, Matt sent me some uh, info about best places to gather uh, certain materials and, and data and stuff like that in the, on the, for the John Beamer account. You know, Jameson's crash site and certain planets to get the best raw materials. Um, yeah, so thank you for, for that, man. That's awesome. Thanks for taking the time for that. Do I like Marvel? Um, yeah, uh, up to a point. <laughs> uh, some of them. Um, I haven't seen all the movies and I don't know if I'll even have enough life in me to catch up. Because by the time I... Uh, by the time I do... Well, there's probably going to be another 20 movies out. I think, that, I think the Marvel market is a bit oversaturated right now. And I know there's... There's new Avengers stuff coming and... Yeah, just to watch all the movies in order would be just 
nightmare. But yeah, I don't mind. It's those kind of movies for me though are ones I would watch. You know, when I just want to kind of chill out and not have to concentrate too hard. You know, that's what the, that's how I see those kind of movies. Dodger Donnelly. Well, you sound like what is it? One of which one is it? Ant or Deck? <laughs> one of one of his. Um, not ancestors, the other the other way around. Yeah, he's one of his dodgy brothers. Uh, right, we need to make the next jump. I'm I'm getting lost here. So we're in D12 two, making another jump. Now apparently we have to refuel in this next system, so we need to take on some fuel. Otherwise, we're going to be screwed. How is our fuel situation? Ah, it's not too bad. But we won't make it to the next fuel stop if we don't. So we better pay attention. Nothing notable in this system, I don't think. Nothing nothing in particular really. Four, three, two, one. Well, I don't know about a clan, but we already have a we already have a um, squadron, <coughs> which you you know people can join the squadron. Ooh, oh, it's one of these fast buggers, and I don't have I don't have control of my ship. Okay, so this means we're not going to be um, we're not going to be supercharging. I could, I could, couldn't I? Because I did find a method to do this. Because this does my head in. This is really bad for photosensitivity. If you go right to the top of the flame, not this is not so bad. It's just that flickery crap does my head in. Okay. So now we just venture in really slow. My headlights are brighter than this. <laughs> yeah. Brighter than a neutron star. Neutron bulbs. Come on. I don't want to miss it. And I'm trying to come to as much of a standstill as possible. Close my eyes. get out now. Taking a bit longer than usual. Wow, we got slung out there. Okay. Now, target B. Man, that was uncomfortable. Yes, you're right, Simondo. There hasn't been one for quite a while. Hi Jeffrey, what am I looking for? In terms of what? Planets? Organics? I don't know why I uh, came out of the normal space there. That wasn't an intention. Right, let's go and get some fuel. Yeah, if I didn't supercharge, I would have to make four normal jumps to get to the next... to get to the next neutron. Yeah, these are close. So I guess the explanation must be that because this sun is so close, that the gravity of this is kind of pulling the... or upsetting the thing. Doing in space right now. Oh, this is just basically exploration, Jeffrey. We're just exploring. We're like 24,000 light years away from populated space. So we're just doing a little bit of exploration. Well, I say a little bit, quite a bit of exploration. Okay, so now, as we are scooping, I, can't, I don't think I de-scanned this place. That's a nice, nice healthy scoop rate we have on, on there. So... Yeah, that... Uh, that did my head in, man, that... Um, well, my eye, anyway, one of my eyes. 
do not like these fast twirling electrons. So this is our next one and I'll give you guys an update of the distance we are from Sol once we jump in here. <clears throat> so once we um, See, the reason I'm doing it from here is because the uh, it was guaranteed that the system that had the fleet carrier in was going to be in Spanch, you know. So I didn't have to fly to, to anywhere to start a Spanch trip, if that makes sense. Because not every, not every star system is in Spanch, but I knew that that DSSA one would be. So that's why I started from here. So I want to stick on this trail just for a little while um, until we make some good progress. So right now we are 23,600. I wanted to say 20, 20,000. 20,000 and anything, and I'm good to go. Okay, next. I'm not stopping to look at any planets, but like I say, if anything is picked up by Elite Observatory Corps, then we'll check it out. But I don't think it will be, because I think you have to do the FSS to find that out, if there's any close planets or anything like that. What was there here? Nine? Yeah, they're just... Well, high metal content. Oh no, we only need to find two of them. Okay, let's pick them up. These are probably already discovered anyway. Because we're on the galaxy plotter route. I would I would say these are pre-discovered. Let's have a look. Yeah. So <clears throat> in terms of new discoveries, there's gonna be very little on these journey. Yeah, like you say, Budman, yeah. There are a few occasions where you get, you get <coughs> new discoveries. For example, if it's a neutron star, sometimes you find that the neutron star has been discovered, but they haven't bothered scanning everything else in the system. So you might have, say, seven bodies, and nobody's bothered with those because they've just used it as a jump point. So that's, that's happened a couple of times. It's rare though, I'll give you that, it is rare. System scan complete. Okay. Warning, free shift drive operating beyond safety limits. Free shift drive supercharged. Nice. Right, that's D83. Now we go to D101. I have to make sure not to miss a refuel, which is oh, good thing I said that because the refuel is here. So possibility of another fast spinning neutron here. I would rather you didn't. There's, there's always that risk at refuel, refuel points in a system with a neutron star, always. <clears throat> but hopefully, fingers crossed, nothing. I'm really, um, once I've done a few jumps, guys, I'm really waiting to just land and check out this new uh, ship kit. Land, on a, land in a dark region and just put the lights on and just see how much it really lights up. I mean, if, Budman's uh, shots or anything, screenshots or anything to go by, it should be pretty damn effective. So I'm looking forward to that. And great for Odyssey when you're landing. When you're doing those missions where you've got to, you know, approach, uh, what do you call it, um, illegal markers and hidden, hidden cash and stuff like that, where the containers are with the hush, you want to light, light your way so you can see people you know, potential scavengers. Yeah, it's going to be ideal for that. Okay. Body seen. Oh, 
There you go. Fast Pick orbit. that up. Body B. Fast orbit. That's this. These are fast orbits. <clears throat> so apparently, the plum is orbiting around the orange uh, in seven hours. It's always seven hours, isn't it? That seems to be a recurring number. 6.7 or seven hours. Seems to be, yeah, of that era. Of that era. <laughs> Not era. Uh, I, I know what I mean. I just get the word wrong. Yeah. Uh, okay, we need to refuel, guys. So we do need to go to uh, B. And if we watch, if we sit here for seven hours, we can watch the we can watch the plum go around the orange. <laughs> Elite dangerous for dummies. <laughs> there it is. So for it to do it in seven hours, you would expect, as you can see, that it would be close by. It wouldn't have a such a big distance. Obviously, the greater the distance, then the faster it's going to be moving to get round. Snowman, there we go. <laughs> a sun man, we've got, got a sun man there. Oh, it's BB 8. No, 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 it's not BB 8. Can't do BB 8s with suns. Right, here we go. So while this is scoop, scooperino, we'll go to plotting the next system in. You make a lot of progress this way, but it's you're sacrificing discoveries at the same time. But I need to uh, combine the two things, right? So I'm, I'm combining distance with exploration, I'm trying to do that at the same time. So in, a, in I don't think it'll happen in this jump, but in, after the next one, we'll be we will be under twenty three thousand. We'll be in the twenty two thousands which will pretty much put us halfway to where I want it to be. So we're doing, we're doing good. So the next time we refuel is in one, two, three jumps time. And thankfully that wasn't a fast spinning neutron. Ooh. It's a shame that none of the, um, the hazard kit is visible from the cockpit, you know? There's nothing on the nose. It's underneath. We know it's underneath the nose. Um, kind of starts venturing into the realm of gameplay. What's that? Oh, the dolphin. So, new, new ship kits act. Yes, it adds extra lights, yes. Yeah, six extra in this case. I wonder if I can see it from here because we we've got the wow look at this shine man now that would be a good screenshot if i can oh no that's quite a unique shot so let me speed up the camera if we go in front and turn on the lights See, we've got un underneath, there's two on the nose, and then we've got, ah, slow it down now. We've got four up here. Doesn't look too blinding from here, does it? But then again, you're competing against the light of a neutron star, so it's not really gonna look too bright against that. we have this two more lights under there which I think looks really good why is that not moving sideways okay we've got to go forward as well and we have these I like the detail there I like the fact that it just adds extra detail to the ship
it's really cool it's quite cool all right um no no it's not 64 it's 64 the, the Canadian dollars is tr is translated into British pounds and it translates to 64 uh, pounds <laughs> but with super chat of course then there's Google takes 30% of that as well so that's going to be 18 19 I don't know yeah Google Google takes 30% it might be 25 for me I'm not sure Remember they did this thing a couple of years ago where Google was sending out um, you had to fill in a tax form even if you weren't a US citizen um, and then they calculated how much tax or something they were going to take off any any what was the word they used earnings I guess yeah and then they don't pay you for 30 days on top of that Warning, from shift drive operating beyond safety limit. It's just the it's just the limitations of super chat. It's, it's the way it is. You know. I mean Google, it's not as if they uh <laughs> they need the money. They don't. How about we say don't take money off content creators and we'll carry on not letting you pay taxes? See look, we've got three bodies here. But not we've got two non uh newly discovered ones. Let's take a look at those and discover those. So this is just one of these systems where people have used it as a drop-off point. System scan complete. And it doesn't look like... Oh yeah, that one is! Is that 5-1? Yeah, so D12-5-1. And let's go back to this one. I don't know about 5-2. I'd have to have a look. What if I target it? I can tell you that 5-1, this one, is a terraforming candidate, this, give, despite that it's the first planet in the, in the list. Now, what about this one? We'll get there. It'll, there we go. No. <clears throat> right, so this first one is a candidate for terraforming. Why it takes so long to focus on it, but there we go. Let's go and uh, map it. We have a 308 jump range. So I'll whiz over and map this. Let me just take another quick look. Okay, so not land, uh, not landable, unfortunately. I'm like I'm like you, Simondo. I love the DBX uh, exploration and stuff like that. As a, as a small ship to do it with. In fact, somebody asked me yesterday on my John Beamer stream what my next ship would be, and I said an ASP, didn't I? But I think I could probably afford a DBX right now in John, with John Beamer. So he could, he could have a Diamondback Explorer. And the Cobra. Yeah. I think I might get a DBX for John Beamer. I don't know how much they cost, but they've got to be a lot less than a ASP. And they can... They've got a really hellish jump range on them as well. You know, they can hit 70s, can't they? When they're, when they're stretched and engineered and everything. So it would be a really good... Why didn't I think of the DBX? Yeah. I'd love a little DBX. Point four million is it? Wow. Well, I believe the um, 
what if I get it in one of Young Young Ruiz systems? I believe that the ASP is 6.2 million, I think. And I've got, what have I got now? 5 million or something? So I could definitely afford to buy one stock. And maybe even put a few upgrades on it. I could certainly do that. You get the most modules on the Dolphin. Surface hmm. 50%. I'll check them both out. But what kind of jump range can you get on it? Mind you, I'm not, don't, jump range isn't really a big thing for me. Right now, I'm not planning on going on any exploration trips with Beamer. Um, but which which ship has got the most default jump range? Like when you buy it stock, the most jump range from stock. I wonder. I actually don't know the answer to that. I would have thought it would be like a Type 7, maybe a Type 6 or a DBX. I don't know. Right, so we're now jumping to 12.5 to 11, 11 zero. This jump. So that's about 1.6 million for the, um, for the probing of a high metal content with terraforming. Yeah, that flashy neutron stars messed my, my head up. I hate them. DBX, right. Then that is what I'll get. Four, DBX. Three, Could even replace it with the replace the Cobra with the DBX. Any good for combat? Because <laughs> there's there's two class twos and two class one hard points on a Cobra. I don't, I don't know what the DBX has. Yeah, you're right, Samondo, it was the DBX. Yep. Right, so I'm going to have a look at the system map while I'm inside the stream here. We still have something that needs to be discovered. So I read an article today, guys. The machines are fighting back. Robots. Robotch. Robotch? Robotch. I suppose it is a botch. Ro robots are injuring humans now. Did you hear about this? One large, two medium. Oh, that's just as good. If No, that's a little bit better, actually. Um, yeah, it was a chess match where this robot was playing like four games at the same time <coughs> and he was playing this kid. I don't know if the kid was a prodigy or whatever and the robot made its move with its arm zzz, zzz. and as the kid went to grab his piece to make his move the robot came and and grabbed his hand, well, yeah, and broke his finger. <laughs> It's on YouTube. Just if you YouTube for robot breaks, uh, robot breaks finger, chess, you'll see it. <coughs> I think it just pushed down on his finger on the board. It hasn't got a hand or anything. It's like a, a probe, like a single rod. And it pushed down on his finger and broke his finger. The robots are fighting back. Skynet has begun, guys. <laughs> they'll probably retire that computer that robot and as he's being carted away he'll be saying I'll be back but as he was playing chess I imagine that that robot was just a pawn in the Trying a joke there didn't work out. <laughs> so, 11 2 
So it's it's the after this, after th this next jump, after this one is a refuel point. And according to Spange, this puts us 22,600 away from Shinrata Desra, not Seoul. So that means we've made a p progress already of 2,000 light years. Which is not bad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the next system. If it's one of those fast ones, then we'll just do normal jumps. Okay, let's go. I haven't been checking off my progress as I've been jumping. You have to tick them off as done, just so you know where you are. Okay, here we go. Nothing else in this system except the neutron. So, let's do this jump. So here we've got a few stars. I just hope that the first M-class star is not too close to the neutron. Otherwise, trouble. Why are you going to be beating any ovens? The oven. Don't hit the cooker. Beat, beat oven. Normal or fast? Okay, eyes closed. Body B. Fast orbit. Body A. Fast orbit. Wow, look at those two unexplored way back down there. Oh, I hate these neutrons. There should be, there should be an option in the game to disable them and just have them normal. Disable fast spinning neutrons. I got a bit close there, didn't I? Jeez. If I hadn't if I hadn't pulled the nose out, we could have been in some big trouble. Right, so we're gonna be doing some normal flying now to the next neutron. Which is a good thing. Because we haven't supercharged. So we're gonna pop the root in here. And pop the root. Make sure that we have. Actually, don't use any jet cone boosts on this one. Just plop. Morning. Temperature critical. Four jumps, just as I said. That's what it is. It's normally four jumps. The equivalent of a neutron jump. Yes, Scary Club. Um, yeah, maximum. It's not the fastest fuel scoop, I don't think. This is only a class seven, I, I believe it is. And on the cutter, you can have a class eight. If I'm not mistaken, let me just double check. Uh, yeah, so this is a 7A. The cutter takes an 8. So, however, I think it's a, it's not an ideal exploration ship, the cutter. But yeah, the cutter can scoop faster. I'm not sure if the vet can take an 8. Corvette, I, I really don't know. But, yeah, I know for sure that the cutter is the only thing that can scoop faster than this. But a class 8 fuel scoop doesn't come cheap unless you're in the billionaires club. They're quite pricey. They really are. I don't know what the scoop rate would be. 1500 maybe? Corvette is a class 7. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the I think it's the cutter with the class 8 fuel scoops that are responsible for spinning the neutron stars so fast <laughs> with the suction. 
it spins them around. <laughs> Let's see what's here. I'm just going to have the star move away from us. There we go. All right, let's see what we have. We have a gas giant. That would be the easiest thing to find first, I think. And then come down. Oh, it has no bodies. Okay. HMC. Not. I nearly said transferable, but that would be wrong. So terraformable would be better. Clusters. So obvious by its sound, right? And one more. Body V3. Oh. High biological value. High biological value. Tell me more. Landable with atmosphere. Okay, so it's ammonia and high biological what are we looking at stratum tectonicus possibly let's have a look come down my list and it is stratum tectonicus and bacterium alcinium never heard of it so stratum tectonicus yes is worth eight hundred and six thousand so we're gonna go there and check this out so we'll target it and go then I'll tell you what we're looking at as we go. So, we are looking at, I'll try and say it again, Bacterium alcyonium, and it's going to either be teal, sage, or red, and Stratum tectonicus, which is either going to be green, grey, or turquoise. I don't care what colour they are. All in all, well, the bacteria is 119,500 credits. And the stratum, which is at 806,000. So. I think I've got an idea what I'm going to do here. I'm going to land near the light dark side. Ramoin! Uh, back with the rusty, yep. Still out in the deep black, yes. When am I going to hit the bubble? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. Trying to, I'm trying to right now just knock off about 4,000 light years or 5,000. I want to be at 20,000 and then get some more exploration done. So currently we're at 22,4. So I need to scrub off another 2,500 light years with more or less 300 light year jumps every time and then. Uh, get down to the nitty-gritty of exploration but I said I would stop off if there was anything interesting and we've just found something interesting and uh, yes a new look ship we have the hazard ship kit on here so it's, um, it's different looking now you will see it shortly in fact to make the Make the most of the visuals. I think I think I will land in the, on the light side, and then once I've got what I want, we'll go back onto the night. We'll go on onto the night side. In fact, what we can do? Hold on. Surface scan by fifty percent. Yeah, the other two are not atmospheric, though. Yeah, okay. Body V three complete has high biological value. Okay, so let's just land somewhere here, and uh, when we're done, I'll take off and land on the dark side. I want to check these lights out. Now I want to go to the, come down on the throttle until we get to the, the lowest blue point. And I think I've my angle was there was too steep. scrub off some speed here there we go we should be good to go take a quick preview of what we're coming into that's good enough for me stratum is nice and easy to find i think 
Yes, you can have a look, see with mine. Definitely, definitely. Once we get landed. I'm gonna bring myself over so I'm between the rough and the smooth here. 0.3 gravity here. That 0.29 should maybe change. I don't know if it will. There it is. Well, it's kind of dark here anyway. And extremely orange. To get the best idea of how the lights transmit, you know, the distance, we're going to need to land somewhere flattish. And also we need to know where there are stratum. Usually, usually stratum's quite easy to find. All right, I think that's it. Once the ship's decided to stop, thank you. Lights on, here we go. <coughs> Lights on, yeah, it's not too bad. Actually, that is better. It's a pity you can't control the lights separately. That's stratum. So we'll land here, hopefully, and we'll stay focused on that stratum. Beautiful. So we'll take out the SRB and turn its lights off. How do I feel about Frontier's development? I'm sure it's developing nicely. <laughs> yeah. And that is what you get from an ammonia atmosphere. Don't breathe. Okay, so lights off on the SRV. Okay, I was expecting better, if I'm honest. Let's see the distance though. Actually, no, to be fair. Look at the distance this light's still going out to. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, look, it's still lighting up. Actually, it's better than I thought it was. Oh yeah, nice. Let's have a look at the ship then. Yeah, when we get back, Ramon, I'll show you the ship. Well, this is 500 meters. Frame rate down to 35, awesome. Turquoise. I wonder if it's the frame rate losses because of these lights on the ship, now that we have six extra ones. Is that costing me all those frames? Nasty. Ship kit with a frame rate hit. All right, let's get the scans done and that when we come back, we'll take a look at the ship. We need that same kit for the SRV, don't we? Extra lights. SRV kits. Yeah, I, I could turn them off, but... A bit far away now. I just put them on just to have a look and demonstrate what it would be like. Minimum distance reached. You've travelled over 500 meters from previous sample. I mean, if you remember before, on the old ship kit, it was still a case. Remember we used to walk back to the Anaconda and it used to drop the frame rates? Just walking back. Mm -hmm. 
it's brightening up the uh, quite a bit of the area actually and those fins on the back <laughs> they look so out of place Tonic is going to be easy, it's just the uh, bacteria It's going to be a bit tricky. Now that we have the super lights, we're going to make it. Come on. No. Yes. Minimum distance oh. reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Talk about just being on the edge here and that's it that's that done <laughs> yep spot on there perfect right back to the old ship I've got even some light on where I am now. It looks lit up here a little bit. Look at the light coming over here though. It would be nice if the, uh, the lights were tuned to where the SRV is. So wherever I turn, the lights turn on the ship to follow me. <laughs> Let's take a look at this thing by actually climbing onto it. Alright. Let's take a look at the new Conda. So frame rates are now okay. So we've got two lights underneath and Scaffolding, plenty of scaffolding. That's my torch. Just replaced the battery, so it's brand new. So we got yeah some scaffolding underneath there, and then we have these. Our actual collision objects. Good. And then up here, cockpit. And we have more lights. Yeah, so it's kind of, it really fans out quite a bit. And at the back we've got whatever the hell these things are. Batteries. These are the batteries to power the lights. <laughs> fuses. There's the fuses for them, guys. 130 amp. <laughs> and then we have these things. look pretty cool kind of folded in quite nice and then these of course the thing with the night vision that you can pick out the detail better because of the edges yeah yeah it's, it's not bad obviously adds a few polygons to the ship but nothing major And in terms of lighting up in front of you, um, it's certainly more improved. That's with my torch off now. Be good at bases as well, at settlements. 
Where's me serve? There it is. Yeah, don't need to land on the dark side now. Let's look for some bacteria. I'm not... If we find it, we find it quickly. If not, uh, you know, I'm just going to move on. I've got my stratum. Lloyds of London. <laughs> How come? How much does the ship cost? Well, I don't know. I mean, the rebuy is... I don't know what this ship would cost. Um, a bit, I would imagine. Let me see if I can bring it up. So, roughly, we're looking at around, according to Coriolis, looking at around 270 million. And that's including all my outfitting. Yeah, that includes all, everything that's inside the ship. Not just buying an anaconda. Right, so... Bacteria hunting without night vision, just using the lights. See that? That's bacteria, right? Is it? Or is it tectonicus? I have no idea. I've never seen so much anyway. Let's let's have a look. I don't know what that is. A lot of it. Oh, it's stratum. Bumpy. Bumpy equals stratum. Yeah. I've even got lights on the ground upside down now. <coughs> Excuse me. Bacteria, right? Yeah. I wanted to turn to it so I could see what, what the lighting situation was. Hey, humble monk! Seen the light. Oh, I should have brought the SRV. Doesn't matter. The SRV just for the for the scan, but I don't think I've ever picked this one up before. Alcyonium. Uh, I think for the last sighting, I want to bring the SRV out. Ionium, yes. This is a very different looking anaconda now. I like it though. I think it's one of the best ship kits they've done. I mean, the, the Raider kit looked good with all the spikes, you know, especially if you were, they were good for building, um, I have an Anaconda with the Raider kit on, but it's my Xeno one, you know, the, my anti-Thargoid ship. And 
and I also did at one point a Aspect Explorer that had the radar kit on. Minimum distance reached. You've travelled over 500 metres from previous sample. Yeah, and I'm too high up as well. I'm having to fly like Boba Fett now. Did I, did I have throttle on? What's going on? Boba Fett's got the weirdest looking ship. It's such a strange thing. <laughs> Like somebody's cut the back off. Okay, go forward. These lights have come in handy when we're on a planet where daytime is dark. I need to stick to flat ground though, if I want. I want bacteria. Kilometer up. And it was still reflecting on the ground. I don't know why, but it feels more awkward now. Four kilometers away from the last bio scan, bacteria scan, not the one we did. I'm not too fussed about the bacteria if I'm honest. It's just the fact that I've not discovered it in this system before, if ever. Did I just see one? Feels like my anaconda is taking a bit longer to stop. The ship kits have weight. <laughs> Does it add mass to the ship? Like when you go into outfitting and it shows you the mass, I wonder if, if it changes when you add a ship kit. Interesting thing. Anyone know the answer to that? I'm, I'm going to guess it doesn't because I don't know whether Frontier will be bothered with such things. I wouldn't rule it out either. It should. Yeah, yeah, it, in the real world it should, but I don't know whether in the Elite Dangerous Universe it does. Yeah, and you'd only get drag in atmospheres. In space, drag isn't even uh, a thing. weighty in, in 0.3 G. Feels like it's got a bit more, like the planet's got more G than normal. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way I'm flying it. Could be that. Okay. I'm going to give it another few seconds and then we're going to blast out of here. on command. Right, SRV on the last one. Uh oh. I 
thought I was getting dropped into an abyss. Turns out it was just a big black shadow. Now, can I actually see the bacteria with all this light? There it is. Right, one more to go, and then we can push forward. And the next time we spy some bacteria, we come out in the SRV. I don't know whether we'll get... I, we should get a 50,000 codex voucher entry, whatever it is. 50,000, we should. First we need to get 500 meters away, so let's do that. It won't take long in a conda. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Now just give me a bacteria spot. And, and I'll leave you alone. need to be a bit further back because I need my turret to deploy. I hope that's far enough. So heading is 301. Low gravity warning. Spot. I'm sure I spotted a spot. Bacteria. All right. Let's see if this is worth fifty grand. No. Oh. That's disappointing. I must have found this in the past then, but I don't recall it. I mean, I have come across Alcyonium bacterium before, but it, I didn't, like I came across that on the last stream, I think, on a planet, but I didn't scan it. I might need these for synthesis at some point. Synthesizing AFMUs or whatever. Cool. We've got everything. So we're heading to the 11.3, aren't we? Yes. On route two. Well, that's an extra million. I think that's probably going to be enough to get me into the next rank. But I'm not going back to the uh, fleet carrier. Because look at that cataloger rank. It was right at the end. 
oh, just didn't quite have enough. But I think this stratum would have been enough to tip it over, for sure. I got it on foot. Oh, does it do it that way as well? I thought you needed the SRV to do that. Oh, thanks for checking, Budwin. Appreciate it. Yeah, indeed, all helps the exobiology rank. Yes, very much so. And I've been needing that. Yeah, that ammonia atmosphere planet it was quite dark wasn't it complete. nine bodies brand new indeed so we watched the Sun shrink on the radar and when it stopped shrinking there we can come off throttle and let's see what we got in here See? I see bodies. Special so far. All right, we move on. If there is extra mass on this ship, <coughs> it should affect my jump range. 76.2 is still the jump range though, which I think it was that before. I don't have a clue what the mass was before. Mm. I have an inkling that it doesn't change the mass of the ship. Okay, we got a big one here, guys. As long as I end up 20,000 or under by the end. That's all I want. And then if we can do the same every stream, like cover 5,000 light years, split it between, you know, uh, neutron jumping and exploring, we can get home in the next four streams, five streams. Maybe wrap it up in under 40 parts, because, <laughs> yeah long time I don't know when part one was Rusty goes east part one because we were we started from Colonia we so we'd already ventured out anyway but I, I know that my distant worlds trip was six months but there was a lot of jumping and scooping there like the the ratio between that and exploring was bigger than what this has been there's been a lot more exploration here on this trip ratio wise So, 17 more to go.
Plenty of geo so far. Oh, I'm still too close to that sun. Alright, lots of stuff here. Forty eight AA. Nested moon. Nested moon. Forty eight C. Landable with atmosphere. And. Okay, I'm not going to bother with this one. Very low value. Bacterium bursicula and Fonticulua campestris. Yeah. Forty eight E. Landable Same again. with atmosphere. If you scan both of these, it's a hundred and twenty thousand credits for everything. Yes, it does all help to the to the landable uh, with atmosphere to the ranking, but still, again, same thing, same bacteria, same Fonticulia campestris here. Forty-eight D, landable with atmosphere. You'll never guess what's on here, guys. Yep, bacterium vesicula and Fonticulia campestris. 48 I suppose if you add them all up, right, you could, yeah, how many has that been now, uh, one, two, that five, so there's half a million there, but also, you know, plenty of time as well to invest into that, so there's nothing flashing there, so we're okay. Five months, was it? Oh, that was the trip to go to Colonia though, right? Yeah. I can't believe this has been nearly as long as Distant Worlds. Maybe we, maybe with Distant Worlds, we streamed it more often though. Like, this is, this is basically once a week. I'm sure Distant Worlds, we did multiple streams per week though. Still though, five months. To be honest, in a way, I'm not so desperate to get back 47. into the bubble now because of the John Beamer account. But it would still be good because, you know, I want to, uh, I want to use my, all my grade 5 stuff to kill scavengers and whatever, where John Beamer is still at, kind of at the beginning stages of Odyssey with unengineered weapons and suits and ships <laughs> but it's more exciting that way in a way because it's more of a challenge things are a bit more of a challenge so there's probably more excitement doing it with Beamer than with with Rusty's account I have a friend request here oh yeah any f I've got had a few a few pending uh, requests on my account here uh, they've all been taken care of I didn't check the squadrons. I was actually going to do that. But uh, the group... Oh, okay, nothing pending there, so we're good. So, group requests and friend requests are all processed and done. Right, I'm not going to bother with anything in here. What was that thing that we found, though? There was a... Let's go to Explorer. Come down. Close orbit. Amazing. So let's go. And here is the neutron star. We would have landed in had we had we scooped off that fast one. And we've got some pretty good fuel here, so we don't have to worry about refueling until Spanch tells us to. So I think we need to do one, two, three, four, five, six more neutron jumps, and then we're into the twenty thousands. Two zero. System scan complete. 
which will be perfect. Systems can complete, she said. I'm losing the power of speech here. Oh, we've got another friend request from Captain Alex Hawthorne. I will take care of that. There you go. I'm too trusting. I let anybody in. <laughs> All right. Uh, next jump is already in my buffer, so let's go. System into the buffer now. Already. That's true, humble. <laughs> and I'm in solo. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm fine. I'm usually in solo anyway, so it makes no difference. One must be a planet. As if they were all stars, it would have said systems completely right. Yeah, been done already. Okay, we push on and get these over done with as soon as possible. Not scoop. Did I not scoop or did I not scoop properly? What the hell just happened? I thought we supercharged. We did. Three hundred and ten. Okay. Yo, man. Three eleven. I need. Oh yeah, right. It's because I, sh if I'd carried on following the plan, I should have actually burned off more fuel than I have burned off. I see. So where am I? Okay, we'll try and get close. I'll do. No, you don't plot a route. When are we fueling anyway? We're having a double jump here should put us back on track. Fuel wise, I hope so. Only 21,000 <laughs> light years. It's quite a... F yeah, I'm only 21,000 from, um, from Seoul as well. So we've got like a little triangle thing going on here. Grey Holland! Hey, Grey! Yeah, too much fuel indeed. But now that I'm dividing it up into two jumps, I have to make sure not to fuel here. Do not scoop. No scoopinge. No scoopinge. Nothing. We will be scooping, hopefully, if it's not a fast. Well, we'll be scooping it anyway, but hopefully, it's not a fast one in the jump after this one. We will do this jump and then 
uh, the next one, which is 60, D6, yeah, D6-1, not 66. D6-1 is the one we're going to be uh, peeling from. And then we've got... After we've fueled, we do two more jumps, and then a third jump where we fuel, and I think that's that's it. Then we'll be at, we should be around 20,700 from Seoul. And we started today at 24,300. So we'll have, yeah, we'll have whittled it down 4,000 light years. Which is not too bad at all. already uh, an atmospheric here and it hasn't been mapped or anything so what I'm going to do is just target it with the wrong icon just target it look at it from here okay there it is, right in front of us. Well, now it's one of these two. And I got the wrong one, so it must be this one. 42A. Landable with atmosphere. Okay, I don't know what the bios are. I can tell you it's an argon atmosphere. And we're looking at... Nothing high, otherwise it would have said... Oh. All right, there's no chance this is here, but <laughs> right, you guys know there's going to be no chance for this, right? There's two bios, but we've got three possibilities. I'm going to give you the first two possibilities: Bacterium basicula and Fontaquilia campestris, just like we found on that other system five times over. The other possibility: Electrosae pluma. Really? Why? Because it's an argon atmosphere? I don't know. The chance of electricity being on here is... Well... Don't take that bet. So, for the curious amongst you... Yes, Commander Madal, I know it's been another uh, incredible response. Yeah. planet we've got to definitely um, know for sure right because if it's electricity it's always good electricity brings in 339,000 no it, well I think Frontier are using reverse psychology on us but I'll be reversing it back I don't even know what that means, but yeah. <laughs> so, where are we? We're in D... D87, so the next system... I'm going to buffer that. Okay, that's now copied into memory. D61, refueling point. be good from there and on the next system where it says to refuel I don't think we even need to do that because we'll, if we're just doing normal normal jumping from then we're bound to come across an M-class star or, or some scoopable star it won't, it won't be critical to do it from there You, you know, it's, it's not going to be electricity. I mean, it, it could be.
Uh, no, understated. It wasn't my fleet carrier. I, yeah, I don't actually own one. The, the squadron has one, which belongs to Angry Citizen. Um, but no, the fleet carrier is one of the DSSA ones. It's out there. It's basically a network of fleet carriers that are based in every single sector in the galaxy. I remember way back, I think we were in Trojan's belt, and one of the possibilities that came up was Receptor. There was like two or three possibilities, but there was one, and it was one bio. And that one, and we were all going, right, it's got to be bacteria. And it, it turned out to be a Receptor. So it's not impossible that, that there could be electricity here, but there's no chance I'm putting money on it. Oh. Credits or arcs. Yeah. Ask me about it later. I don't think it's going to happen. So let's go. Let's have a look. It's not going to be electricity. We know bacteria is going to be the first one. Yep. Ready? <sighs> Fudge. Okay. The only th this is the first time I've noticed patterns on the planet's surface with the heat map. Look at that. They look very, very similar. They're not identical. Oh, yes, they are identical. Well, actually, I don't know. Are they? I can't believe it. It's not Fonticulia campestris. Are you kidding? Holy crumbs, guys. Unbelievable. I said there was a, a small chance, but I, no way I believed it was going to happen. No chance. I would never have bet on it. Never. That's insane. Yeah, now you get closer. That pattern. You see the shape is similar? Like this, the white patch here, look at the white patch. And it's got that head coming up with the mouth open, the snake. And then the one, it's got it up on the top there and there. So that is a repeating pattern. And the canyon's going through a repeating as well. But it's not a perfect match because that one's got green dots in it. That one up there has got green dots in there that this one next to me doesn't have. But the shape is the same. You don't notice it without the heat map on, though. But yes, there is a bit of tiling there. Do I care? No. I don't care one bit. Don't bother me. It's not like I'm going to be visiting the entire planet and going, hmm, a bit of deja vu here. I think I've been here before. <laughs> Planet's massive. I don't really care. It's only when it's at sm small, you know, when you're on the ground and you see it tiling like, like a kitchen floor or something, then it gets a little bit... Yeah, you think, oh, that doesn't look right. But on such a massive scale like this... Ah. That's the first time I've noticed it. It's probably happened before without me realising, but that one was really noticeable. This icy canyons. All right, let's get some electricity. It's been a while since we found some, and it's the pluma. Pluma, which is Spanish for feather. No, pen. Pluma is pen in Spanish. A pluma. Twenty-three thousand eight hundred sixty-five thousand light years away. They'd be back in time for tea then, <laughs> Mr. Putman. All right. So we need to come down a bit closer. 
Now, how easy are these going to be to spot? Would the lights work here? Oh yeah. Right, let me just... I don't know if Pluma is the ones that's got the hairy... the hairy outsides. Uh, codex. It is. It's the hairy ones, Pluma. Uh, and it's looking at mulberry. So we're looking at kind of a, well, it should be like a reddish burgundyish color, but I've got a feeling that it's not going to be like that because the colors, I don't really rely on them here. There we go. Man, this ship's taking longer to stop. Or is it just because I'm used to the John Beamer account for the last two days? <coughs> Could be that. Yeah, from me, yeah, yeah. Warning. Right down in the south, eh? Are you near the, like, Heart and Soul Nebula region, or...? Grand baby. Right, don't touch these. Shocking. Oh, sorry, I didn't see a message there, Commander Madal, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, Angry's using the same link as I do, yeah. Get the baby one. Electrosay Pluma Mulberry, there we go. Distance. A kilometer. Okay. Ship dismissed. The reason I've dismissed the ship is I want A, I want to have a quick look around myself. And B, when I recall the ship, I want to see what it looks like landing with the new ship kit. As long as it doesn't land, you know, six million miles away. Get buried in the snow. All right, guys, here's a question. So we know that Frontier are being very quiet on their next. You know, when they were at LaveCon, I mentioned that they weren't giving any updates out. What would you guys like it to be? Like the next... Frontier's next big secret for Elite Dangerous of what's coming. What would you guys like it to be? For me, I want it to be uh, weather effects. Like snow, rain, 
wind turbulence, that kind of thing, <coughs> on landings. And like when we get out on the planet, there can be high winds, you know, that can affect the way you walk, that kind of thing. Easier engineer mechanics and no engineer clones. Clones? Mm. Sven, hi Sven. Welcome, welcome. Nice to see you. I can't see me bothering with the bacteria here somehow. I haven't seen any either. Return of the Guardians. That sounds like a movie. Is that bacteria right next to me? Or just a dark spot? I think just a dark spot. Yeah, no. Not bacteria. Landable water worlds and earth likes. Ooh. Imagine if it was that. That would be quite something if they came out. That would surprise everybody if they came out with that. You'd need, um, you'd need to put uh, things on your ship where it, it's l where the ship can land on water or something. Ship record. Or you can drop like a boat. <laughs> a boaty craft thing. I thought you said we were... Oh, I'm still a few meters out. 965. You lying swine. I hear you, but I don't see you. Calling a ship on foot is a nightmare. I think I actually have to go in that direction anyway. You've travelled over 1,000 meters from previous sample. It would get ruined if it was in the community's hands because it, it would it would ruin it 100% because everyone's got different ideas and those ideas would get diluted down into uh, it would elite would lose what it is it would it would stop be, being what it is yeah it's that old saying of a camel is a Camel is a horse designed by a committee. Too many minds on the same thing dilutes it down and ruins it. Oh, yeah, don't think I don't think that's the way. Half the community doesn't know what the hell it wants anyway. Can't boost. <laughs> Ship dismissed. Unbelievable. <laughs> more things to do. Yeah, particularly more things to do, yeah, everywhere. Uh, and particularly in exploration as well. But yeah, more more things to do, more diverse missions. There's so many things they could really add. And 
to be honest, if they spent, if they were spending their time just doing ship interiors, just to quiet and down the crowd, I think it's a waste of time and resources that they could be putting into adding so much more content into the game. Cool. You know, like I've just said, more, more missions, more types of missions. Um, you know, more things to do in exploration, more things to do in trading, more illegal. I think I'd like to see more illegal things, smuggling. You know that kind of thing, and I think ship interiors is a, is a is a nice thing to have, but that's a thing that should have been in the game from the beginning. And the fact that it isn't, I think it's going to take too much time and resources that could be better spent on adding other content. Because once you've got the ship resources, it doesn't really add much content to the game. You're just looking at some eye candy for a you know, a while, and then it'll, after a week or so, the novelty will wear off, and then you'll be back to having the exact same content you had in the first place. That's my thoughts on that. Yes, but if you're downloading things as a mod, then you're getting into the realms of maybe downloading something that gives you an advantage over other players and that's like a not it's not pay to win but it's you know download to win again I can't see any reason why you would need that Ship interior should have been in from the from the game. But from the beginning of the game, but uh, unless they divide it up between you know, a couple of people doing ship interiors, but it's gonna take longer, and then the rest of the developers building in extra content. I think content is king here, and I don't count ship interiors as content because it doesn't add to what you know what you can do in the game. Unless you can pick up cargo with your hands and walk into the ship and carry it and put it down, like you can in um, Star Citizen, it has to be functional. If if it has to serve purpose, if there's no purpose to ship interiors other than walking around and sitting on a seat like the fleet carriers, then eh, waste of time. But the fleet carriers have a function because they've got the Vista Genomics, they've got the, the bar, they've got all those places that you would find on a concourse. Oh, of course, there'd be more. it would be more immersive. Uh, of course it would, yeah. But I just feel that the amount of time that they would have to spend on making that for all the ships doesn't help give us any extra content anywhere else. It's just focusing on the inside of ships, which... How, many, how much time do you spend inside your ship in Star Citizen, really? It's just there to serve its purpose as, you know, holding a their equivalent of an SRV. Or walking up some ladders to get to a cockpit and going to man a gunpoint. It's nice and everything, but I, I guess I just believe that there's more stuff that needs to come before. Anyway, let's make this jump. This will be our last fuel point, because we are now 21,600, and that's before this jump. Yeah, repairing power plant in situ, that would be really good. I don't care if it's done on foot or with the SRV on the planet. Yeah, let's say you have a welding tool that requires yttrium it and 
then you would go and have to just keep jumping Fast orbit. until you find a planet with yttrium, go down, Fast power orbit. it, unless you've got yttrium of course. Power your welder and then get out on foot and go and point it at the power plant and weld it. Kind of like the arc cutter but in reverse. So this is annoying. So we'll have gonna get get round this with oh, let's have a look, see where we are here. Jacking, I don't think that's ever going to happen. Can you imagine outfitting your anaconda? It takes months to engineer and outfit a ship. Can you imagine having a possibility where someone can just come and take it and that's it, you don't get it back again. Nah. I wouldn't want that in this game. I had a feeling that was going to happen, but I'm trying to. Trying to negotiate my way here, and it's proving to be a bit of a bitch. Like, how many jumps away is that fleet carrier? Because you know I would. You know I would. Just out of setting things right. just have to risk the seizure. That doesn't work. Right, fuck it. Let's go. We'll get to the next system via route plotting. It ain't worth it. For the sake of four jumps, really ain't worth it. Jump! What's the matter with you? Right, so we'll root plot to the next neutron and we'll go from there. And from now on, any time there's a refueling point, We'll avoid it and we'll just refuel normally and then hop to the next neutron because it's the only way to do it. You might notice, I don't know if you noticed Humble but I actually did drop a heatsink. That's, that's why I managed to escape there. So, we've got some fixing to do. Five jumps away from a frigging fleet carrier. Ninety-eight on the power plant. Don't care.
This isn't something I need to do right now, but I'm doing it anyway. <coughs> Trying to get it back as... I, I, I can put everything back except the power plant. Which I agree, what we've just been talking about, that it needs to be fixed so we can repair the power plant out in the black. This has been something, though, that's been needed for a long time now. Years we've been needing something like this. Yeah, I'm not interested in shortcuts, though, Deckard. That's, it's not playing the game. It's like cheating your way through, not cheating, but you're cheating yourself, really, through the game, taking shortcuts. You know, it's like, it's like loading up another AAA game that has an ending and then just shortcutting your way to the end credits. Why bother? Why buy the game? It's pointless. No, I don't mind uh, short shortcuts, but not, you know, not big ones that get you to big ships and stuff, like within a few days. I'm, I'm not interested in that kind of gameplay. It doesn't do it for me. Remember now what I need to turn on and off. I don't need that now. Normally that is off. got a good mind to, to drop out the other limpets because it's going to affect jump range. Successful. Yeah, 75.9 versus 76.2. The thing is with limpets is that they're very costly. in terms of what you need. It's 10 iron and 10 nickel. But I want jump range. So, we're gonna jettison this lot, whether it's a good idea or not. Seventy six point two. Because that's what Spanish Spanish is based on the fact that I have this jump range, not the seventy five point nine one. Okay. So not bothered about the shields, we don't need those straight away. So everything in here apart from the power plant is Back as it was. And we've given the FSD a nice refresh as well. Alright. Let's make four jumps that are I think it's gonna be four. Yep. Four jumps without looking at anything. Jump and jump and scoop and that's it. Because <coughs> I'm making this twenty thousand 
We've only got 600 light years to go to make it. Sorry. Whenever it, I hear that voice, it, I have an inst it's an instinctive reaction to press the jump range button again. <coughs> I don't know why I called it a jump range button. My brain is deteriorating fast, guys. So I don't know how long I've got left doing this. Come on. Chill, man. You need to chill, man. <laughs> Frontier don't fulfill anybody's dreams. We're all in the same boat. So, I don't care if this next system is going to make me super rich and has got a brand new discovery that no one in the game has ever seen ever. I'm flying straight through it. Because we're heading to... I don't know what my destination is. I think it's B... D63, I think, is the system. It ends with D63. So we're definitely feeling. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that will be my luck, Mr. Budman, missing Raxler. <laughs> Just go straight past it. They got 32 bodies there, look. And you know I would do that. Because it could be anything. Nah. If it had an earth like or an ammonia or something, I, I might be tempted. Python's a nice bit of kit to fight with, isn't it? Because it's kind of, it's not the, it's not the uh, king of the hill, so to speak, but it's not the worst either. Because if you've got a fully tricked out cutter or a, or a vet or something, or even a conda, combat's kind of boring, for the most part. So D63 is the next system, so that is the one we're looking at. And it should be, will be, guaranteed to be, a neutron star. A normal neutron star. One that doesn't kill you. And I think I'll be trying to find the next DSSA carrier as well. Which I know is quite a way down, I think. But I'm not going to focus on it today. I think it's. I think we're a way off it. Actually, it's a bit further down south. No, actually, actually, it would be west. <laughs> if you were looking at it from a compass point, it would be west. It's in the direction of home. Let's put it that way. Well, plenty of landables. Nothing atmospheric, but every single planet is landable. Free shift drive operating beyond safety limits. Nothing mapped. Interesting. Okay. 
I think we've only got to do two more neutron jumps, guys. And the second one could be one of those fast swirly ones. This one should be fine. R2 D4. No. D4 2. BP R D4 2. There must be an R2 D2 system. R2 D dash 2. scanned all right so where are we d d42 so this jump will now put us under 21,000 light years and we'll be in the 20s so to be honest we don't we don't even have to jump to it. Uh, let me just check my range. 307. Okay, it's not the best in the world. And we're not going to make that jump anyway. Where are we? Ah, it's not what I wanted to do. So let's try and find 307.8. That'll do. And that's a K-class star. All right. <clears throat> 21,118. So this should easily put us in the 20,000s. And then that's the goal. Okay, so we're going off Spanish map now. H how we'll get back on it later, I have no idea. Unless... The only way to do it is to keep the route, right? And then, knowing that we're now 20,800, we go down to, say, 18,000. So let's say I plot the route to a neutron star. <clears throat> let's say another thousand thousand light years away right so we plot a neutron star every thousand light years but if I do this one that's a neutron star it's not one that I need to fuel up on so it's not uh, it's not one of those crazy ones uh, in fact I think I'd like to do the one after is this one okay and this one oh that's 2000 miscalculated actually no because I didn't miscalculate it's just that if I if I miss out two neutron stars that's 600 light years extra of course it is Let's go back to this one. All right, and what we'll do is we'll plot a route. Ah. Eleven jumps, including neutrons, but it's not one that's been done by Spanch, so we can still find undiscovered. Uh, systems. So we've got 11 normal 
you know, not normal jumps, but 11 jumps that have been plotted via Elite Dangerous as opposed to Spanch. But it will get us to a system here that is in Spanch so we can carry on from the next stream, if that makes sense. Yeah, I know what I mean. And that way we'll be able to combine um, Spanch galaxy plotted routes with standard ones. All right, let's see what's in the next system. Oh, it's already a neutron star. I don't know whether this is part of anything that's on the galaxy plotter or in Spanch. So it might be a first discovery. Who knows? We shouldn't have neutron stars all the way. That's. So I don't know. This place is looks like it's pretty rich in neutrons. anyone been here? Yeah. Okay, well, we're gonna... The next system is 267 light years. You need this. So once she's finished saying the word limits, it's a good time to power up again, power your throttles up again, and, and start to get out. Another neutron. Oh dear, looks like we're still on a neutron route. And JWWD12 is on the Spanish highway. I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> I'm trying to get off it. But I still want, you know, the occasional neutron now and again. But not every jump. System scan Don't throttle up after she said limits, unless you're right in the middle of the, st uh, the, the stream. If you're on the outskirts, you're going to exit too early. <laughs> in other words, when she said operating beyond safety limits, give it a, give it a second or two, and then, and then start moving out. Guys, this is. Let me sh let me have a look at the map. I want to see if they're all neutrons because I don't really want a full neutron. Okay, we've got a couple of jumps. We got one, two, three, and this one's a neutron. So we got three non-neutrons coming up. Okay, after, yeah, okay, let's just do it. I have to watch my fuel though. But I think it's this neutron, then another neutron, and then a scoopable. We're gonna be very tight on fuel for this. Voyager Golden Record. I think it's amazing. I don't know whether aliens have got a record player. But it is transmitting as well, isn't it? It's transmitting the message. Yeah, that was a Carl Sagan thing. Yeah. Seriously. Really and seriously. Okay, good. Oh, 
will do now. Temporarily. I hate doing this. It's such a pain in the arse. Is we'll get our destination here. See if we can focus in on it. So and clear. And then we'll come down to the root settings, take away jet cones, and plot the root. 16 jumps. It used to be 20, 28, wasn't it? Just want to get off the neutron highway for a little while. Because even even the elite dangerous plot is keeping us on it. Please let this be scoopable. I'll be in big trouble if it isn't. it was, wasn't it? Because we're super low on fuel. Alright, so you scoop away. There we go. We're back on the undiscovered trail. Okay, so not big distances down there. Let's see what's here. Nothing amazing in terms of you know, valuable planets, ammonias, water worlds, earth like that sort of thing. Nothing here. But, 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 maybe on the surface. My ship has horns. It's unrecognizable as an anaconda. <laughs> it just looks completely different. Alright, the little babies. Potato planet. Not found one of those green ones. I don't know if you, can you still get those, you know, those brown and illuminous green planets that you got in Odyssey, uh, in Horizons. Can you still get them in Odyssey? Well, this one's interesting. What's the atmosphere? Carbon dioxide, and it has one percent sulfur, which is why it's it's suggested that Receptor is possible here. No, it's not. Not with 1%. So bacteria, concha, receptor, and tussock. Uh, I've got a feeling it's going to be either bacteria and concha or bacteria and tussock. Receptor with 1% sulfur? No. No, 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 no. I think it has to be a pure, pure sulfur dioxide atmosphere for receptor to even have a chance. think anyway. Three geos. Ah. Zoomed out one too many there. Some of these are buried quite deep. Fast orbit. Body C1. Fast orbit. Close binary relative to body size. Worth checking out, but it depends. Depends on the numbers. So we've got. We've got a a, bo a moon floating around this thing. At very close range and very fast going around, but. 
Oh, they're going around each other by the looks of it. They're close to each other and they're, and they're orbiting each other. So, I'll take a look at the numbers and if they're impressive enough, we'll go and have a look. Like if it takes 40 minutes or something <laughs> to do a full orbit, it might be worth watching them dance. DAB1F Landable with atmosphere Again, what's the carbon dioxide with 1% sulfur? So again, receptor is out. So it's the same thing. Bacteria, concha, receptor, tussock. Same thing. Receptor dab one e Landable with atmosphere. Same again, except without the tussock. There's one biological, possibilities are bacteria, concha or receptor. It's going to be bacteria. Hello, Gumbo. Oh, outrunning errands. When I first saw that, I thought it said you were running out of errands. <laughs> I haven't got any more to do. Right, let's take a look at the figures on the close orbits and see if there's anything worth looking at there. So, fast orbit is six hours. They orbit each other in six hours. Radius and orbit. So the radius is 5,500 kilometers. The orbit is 7,500. Hmm. That's intriguing. Let's go take a look, guys. I'd rather do that than the bios. But if we're near a bio planet afterwards, then check it out. So we've got these two orbiting each other in a six hour period. Now, the two landable with atmospheres are AB1F and AB1E and AB1D, DEF. So, we're actually, we should be up here, really. Yeah, yeah. So, we should be going here first, really. Yeah, it's in the wrong direction, of course, but it's closer. Let's get this one done first. And I'm going to work on the basis that whatever bios are on here are going to be the same on the E and F. Ouch. There. Let me just pop in into cruise speed. You guys can see for yourself. There it is. We're nearly under the 20,000. We started at 24,300 today. So another few jumps, guys, and we'll be in the 19s. So we are... Control yourself, Rusty. We're nearly halfway through all Hawking's Gap, especially if we're coming out, say, here, or even here. We've made a load of progress. I think, is that where we started? Is that where the fleet carrier was? So we've covered this, yeah, we've covered this distance in today's stream. Not so bad at all. So if we keep making this kind of progress, we can be back soon. And once I jump into the inner 
scrotum, septum. I don't know. Where the bubble is, the inner Orion Spur, I think it is, yes. Once we jump into the inner Orion Spur, I can go back to Spanch and go to the um, the new map that the, the no, no, not map, the new uh, routing tool that they have, which is the the one that does the it's like a rags to riches, but it's for exobiology. Um, let me see if I can find what it's called. Expressway to Exo Mastery. So it's just basically just a a, a route that gives you you know from where you are to the bubble but going via all the systems that have got high value bios and that'll be like a last run I do to do um, my ranking up on exobiology okay oh, I've got it all planned guys somehow will one be enough depends on the radius of the planet it was enough and it's tussock <laughs> shall we shall we venture down for some cheap tussock orbital flight engaged And that doesn't look like 54 degrees, does it? The tussock better in the bumpy areas or the flat? I wonder. Maybe we'll go on here between the the cream and the brown. Looks like it doesn't like the creamy areas. I can remind you, yes. Um, the best way I do it is to have um, ED market connector running, and then you've got it puts your ship um, on ED market connector, and then you click on the name. And it takes it over to, it opens up span, uh, Coriolis, opens up Coriolis with your current, with that ship build in it. Uh, and the only way you can export is if you save it out with a name. So unless you've got it, if you've already got it saved out, then it's best to just go to Coriolis and load that ship in. If your current build is not saved, then do it via Marketplace, save it out in Coriolis. And then you'll have the export function and then you just copy and paste all that big text file that's blue it'll already be highlighted for you and you just copy and paste that into Spanch. does that make any sense because otherwise i can i can show you on the stream if you want 0.07 g Even the gravity saluting me. Zero seven. Okay, I'm hearing lots of rain on the windows. Not on my ship. Real life. Ooh, bacteria. And yeah. Very visible. But what about Tussock? I seem I don't know why I think Tussock's growing in the mountains. There we go, it's not, oh, it's not, it's over there. Yeah, Market Connector's good for just porting your current build across. But like I say, if you've already got that build in Coriolis saved, then you, you don't need the Market Connector. Okay, we have two species here. Low 
And I think we'll go for tussock first because bacteria we normally use the ship for. So let's go over here and get the tussock from here. And we'll get the nearest one to us, which is this little fella. Another 50,000 there, lovely. Did that say Ventusa? This could be a new one for me, I don't recall this one. So we'll scan this guy. Furthest away from the other samples that are on the left of the anaconda. It's only 200 meters, so it should make scan two nice and easy. Right, so now we need to go to the other side. There's a lot here. And, and a bit more. Minimum distance reached. You've travelled over 200 meters from previous sample. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm exactly on the border here, so... Yeah, see, that's not scannable, and that is. So what I'll do is I'll take the nearest green that way. I'll do that one. And then if there's any more... I don't know whether this little... F forest we got going on here will be another 200 meters don't think so but it's worth a shot not a chance but there's a little patch over here guess what distance <laughs> reach you've traveled over 200 meters easy sample Yep, it's all scannable. So now we'll go and get that one bacteria that we found. In fact, there's bacteria there on the left side of the ship. So if we scan that one along with that one, this bacteria is 500 meters. We might get this done very quickly. So there's a bacteria. I don't know if it's the furthest one out. There's my answer. This is a good distance away. I like this. We might even cram in all three. I can't guarantee it, but we might. Ah, I'm trying to scan the damn thing. I'm inside. We might be able to do this. without lifting off. So we do the first one here. And then we'll hope there's one close to 500 meters on the way back to the ship. Not too close to the ship, just on the edge of 500. Let's see. Got one on our left here, which I'm hoping that's 500 meters. We might get lucky here, guys. It's gonna be so close. Oh, minimum distance reached. <laughs> You've traveled if I can scan this, this is perfect. Previous sample. Oh, yeah, man. So all that has to happen now is the one that's on the right-hand side of the ship 
has to be more than 500 meters away. That's basically it. And Rusty is 504 meters, so yeah, it works. Over 500 <laughs> from oh, I love it when a plan comes together. That just worked out. That was just very lucky. That just worked out that way. Now, I could do the exact same thing on planets E and F. I could. But I won't. I'm going to keep pushing. Excellent. Oops. It's not every day you get that lucky. Oh, flip. But it's every day I mess this up. Still, I've still got the... Elite Dangerous Horizons muscle memory that the SRV is on the top there. Now it's a helmet. There, the boarding. The ship used to be on the top. And then they added a brand new option and they put it on the top instead of underneath. Bad design choice that was. Gonna head over to close orbit. Take a look. See what's going on over there. So we're looking at. Four, three, two, one. C one. Close binary relative to body size. So it's these two. These two fellas, which are orbiting each other. So let's just line it up. It's not too bad, 60 something degrees. Right, so as it's doing that, we go to... Where is it? Okay. That must be in the wrong map. So we're looking for C. And it's C1 and C2, which is there's C1. So C2 must be really close. And they're, they're, oh my god, they are pretty close. Yeah, so C2 and C1, they're dancing around each other in six hours orbit. They're fairly close. Let's check it out in reality, so to speak. <laughs> yes, well, we all know about Yamix. Yamix is pretty salty about Elite Dangerous for some reason. But yeah, thanks for the compliment. Yeah, I have to get on to No Man's Sky. There's been so many big updates. You know, they've gone through so many different... Like, we've had Horizons and Odyssey, and now No Man's Sky's had so many new chapters, so to speak. I don't know what how you would call them. And they've just had an, another new one. And I had two updates this week, which were 3.3 3 gig each. So the, 
There's been a lot added to the game since I last played. I, I think I should maybe schedule a, a, a No Man's Sky stream or something. You know, we can have Rusty on a Sunday, Beamer on a Friday, and maybe No Man's Sky on a Wednesday or something. I don't know. But I'm, I think if I jump into it now, I'm going to find myself a little bit lost as to where I was, where I am, what I'm doing exactly, and what to do next. You know, I'm, I'm going to feel a little bit lost. So I think I'm going to need some No Man's Sky players on the chat to kind of help me figure out what to do next and what direction to, to go in. Because last I remember I'd, I'd built a little base or something and I had a generator or something going. And yeah, that was about it. I don't really know what to do as an aim. I guess if yeah, yeah, I guess like it's like Ian says, it's different people, different takes on on the same thing. Was it the 20th edition to know? Was it the 20th? Holy crumbs. I'll tell you what, though. You know, since they've released that game, they've been pretty well committed to it. Bringing out... They're, they're beavering away working working on bringing out big updates, aren't they? Like they're, they're, not, they're not taking their foot off the throttle or anything. They're really going at it. And yeah, they did get a hard time when it was initially released. Because it was just not the game that they'd promised. But I think they've more than made up for it now. They've put a lot into it. When an expedition starts. Yeah, and maybe that's a good way to, um, to learn things. Hey Mark, uh, yes, thanks for your um, donation to the uh, Rusty Fund. <laughs> Much appreciated, sir. I land on a planet 0.5 and get in the SRV. For a few minutes I am driving in mid-air. Can I tell you why? If I had to guess, I would say that the the position of the planet or something is maybe off what it should be, so you're kind of you're like it, the game thinks you're on the ground, but you're really not. I don't know. I've not actually seen that before, but I would, I would hope that if you reinstance, that it would fix itself. Otherwise, you you found a planet with maybe minus <laughs> minus gravity. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a bug for sure. Because I've noticed plenty of them in the game. Look at this, guys. We've got two planets. They are really close to each other, aren't they? You could almost do an SRV hop. You could almost jump an SRV from one to the other on this one. And I ain't kidding. Well, it's landable. Unfortunately, we have the dark side of the other one. You wouldn't see very much. Yeah, it's pretty close. I'm not going to land. to head towards the sun. It's going to take a while to get this planet behind me now. But the view should be better from over here. Because they'll both be lit up.
Yep, that'd be nice, Marco. Just something close. And then, yeah, just wangle, wangle away to do it. <laughs> Let's see. Come on. So, there we go. There they are. We've got some we got some worlds and stars in the background as well. It looks like the planet closest to us, it's kind of clenching its sphincter. <laughs> I know it's a crater, but it just looks like it to me. <laughs> uh, it's fairly close to the sun. I wonder what the temperature is on C2. Surface temp, 424 to 828, and this one, yeah, it's, see, it's not much of a difference, because they're so damn close to, to each other. Hmm. I wonder which way they're orbiting, though. Because right now, C2 is in front of C1. I wonder if they're coming around, you know on the plane that we're on right now, so that C2 will be going away from us and then going round to the left. And C1 coming towards us and then going round to the right, so they're doing this anti-clockwise or clockwise dance. So I reckon sometimes maybe C1 is closer to the sun and sometimes C2 is closer to the sun. The only way would literally be just to sit here in normal space and just hit the record button and then come back in six hours and play it back at super fast speed then you can actually watch the planets um, orbiting each other let's just let's just come out a second i think I, i'm supposed to be moving forward but i am seeing some movement here let's put the nose of the ship on that crater it's already moved away look my ship's just completely st static at the moment but look you can see how far away it is off the crater now so you can see the movement it's slow but it's visible <coughs> and without something like elite observatory core you wouldn't even know that this was here probably unless you just happened to stumble upon it but look how far from the crater now so it's moving away from us and i think c1's going to end up because the sun's over there i think c1's going to end up ahead well uh, not ahead but closer to the sun like where c2 was The ship is nearly in the middle of the planet now. Oh yeah, they really orbit. This is the good thing with Elite Dangerous. All the gravity and all the orbits all work exactly as they should. The science is there. So whatever, when you go into the system map and you see, you click on a planet here, for example, and you've got the gravity and the orbital inclination and eccentricity and all this stuff, the axial tilt and the rotational period, takes 17 days for them. See, they're orbiting each other, but it takes 17 days for them to go around the sun. And all of this, like this has got nearly Earth's gravity. And this one, I think, is a little bit less, wasn't it? Yeah, 0.85. And it all works. All the science works. Orbital period, 0 0.3 days. And a third of a day is, yeah, six hours. No, it's not. That's a quarter of a day. 
It must be six point something hours then. Yeah, no point. This isn't exactly a science, it's all rounded up. But yeah, according to the Elite Observatory, it's 6.0 hours. So none of this uh, 6.1 or 6.7 or whatever. But now look. So if I if I now put my my ship's antenna on the edge of this planet, right there, right on the edge, there. Let me just turn off everything here. But if you can just follow the texture of the planet compared to the antenna on the on the on the end there, let's see if we can do it from outside. I couldn't do a spacewalk. No, I, I can't get further down. What would be a good measure? I don't know. But yeah, it's all for real. And this is one of the huge assets of Elite Dangerous. That it has this. So if you... Like, I've been in a conflict zone, right? Battling ships. And the conflict zone has been really, really close to the planet. And the planet's got, like, a decent gravity. And when you explode a ship, it drops materials or cargo sometimes, right? And I've seen those materials getting pulled down by the planet. So you've got to either... You've got to try and scoop up those materials on the move because the planet's gravity is pulling the materials down to it, the surface. Whether they make it onto the surface is another matter. I don't I think they do. But gravity affects stuff out, out, out in space. Even, even my ship here, I, I'm being affected by the gravity of the sun. But look, it's like... I don't know how this is... Let's put the orbit lines on, second. Um, oh, they're not working. <laughs> well, they maybe are. I need to be in. I need to be in super cruise for orbit lines, don't I? There. Pity we couldn't see those. Yeah, they are moving, guys. They are moving. And now, so are we. Amazing. So you could actually land on this C1, pretty much where the 8 of 28 is. Land there, and then just wait, and there'll be a time where that planet that's in front of you will go around to the left, and then it will it will be behind you at some point. Yeah. Chasing materials falling due to gravity. Exactly, Aquatic. It's, it's amazing. Because I was wondering, I thought, why are they moving? Why can't I catch them? I'm trying to scoop them, but they keep... By the time I get there, they keep moving away and they're going downwards. And then I realized, of course, it's, it's frigging gravity. Of course it is. But you get this in Horizons as well, um, chill. You do, it's not just Odyssey. This has been... This, is, this happens in Elite since day one. fascinating to watch if you had the time you could literally just you literally could just sit and watch this happening it's it's fascinating that it it all properly works and this is one of the the fact that all the science works is one of the big things that draws me and keeps me in elite dangerous because it's just amazing Are you new to Elite Dangerous, Chill? Because the stuff in Elite Dangerous, if if you look at the numbers, it'll just blow your mind. <laughs> just looking at the galaxy, uh, the galaxy map, and going in towards the center, and seeing all the systems that are there, the solar systems that are there, knowing that you can visit every single one of them if you had enough life, which you don't. 
Not unless you're planning on living for around a few hundred thousand years. Yes, exactly, Budman, you can. You can literally sit on a planet and wait for the sunrise and the sunset. You can spend a day on a planet from sunrise to sunset. Although try and find one where sunrise to sunset only takes a few hours and not like 24 hours, but you very much could. Indeed. Yeah. Or try spending two minutes on the first planet closest to Beetlejuice. You can land on the dark side there, right? But on the on the side facing the sun, I don't think you can land there, right? Because it, it, your ship overheats. It's just because Beetlejuice is a red giant, isn't it? I think. You can land on the on the hot side of the second planet, I think, but it is it is hot. But the first planet, I think, no chance, right? From what I remember of my visit. Yeah. It is. I think it's it's the fact that the game has all this cool stuff that we kind of it makes the bugs more tolerable in a way. They're still frustrating as hell, but we. We're prepared to tolerate them because, yeah, the game just has these beautiful things that n no other game does, like the, the modeling of the, in the entire so uh, Milky Way. You know, 400 billion solar systems, uh, and me and me here picking the wrong, <laughs> the wrong thing. Uh, right, honk. Hong Kong. Yeah. Who was that aquatic? Yeah, the thing is, exploration is cool in Elite Dangerous because one of Elite Dangerous's biggest boasts is 400 billion star systems. And I don't want to confine myself just to a little dot called the bubble. I want to be out here trying to find stuff. And this is why I think they should in, they should put more stuff out here. Landable with atmosphere. Okay, let's see what he thinks is here. Atmosphere is nitrogen, so again we're looking at a green and red sky possibly. Oh no, it's nitrogen, sorry. No, that could be a nice blue one. So, Fonticulia lapida and Bacterium informum. Now, Bacterium informum, that's good money. That's 426,000. I remember that being good money from last time. Lapida is 195,000. Let's let's target this. That that's good bacteria. You know, there's good bacteria and bad bacteria, right? Oh. <laughs> this is the da planet Danone with good bacteria. <laughs> oh. Oh, do you mean um? The woman, uh, can't remember her name now, Dr. What's-Her-Face. Hans Rickman, how, hi Hans, how are you doing? Help me find this last planet, probably behind the sun. It might not be on any of these orbit lines. It certainly doesn't look like it is. We are on frequency. There it is. Gotcha. Gotcha. System scan complete. Right, let's see what this brings us here. I'll do my YouTube homework, right? So don't forget to like. And if it's your first time here, drop a subscribe and ding the bell and 
chair and all that stuff. I know I've missed something out, but I don't know what. No, I haven't. Like, subscribe, and share, right? Yeah. In the bell. Yes, I've come across Informum a few times. Um, I think I remember coming across it in the Trojan Belt. But I think so far in this sector, I don't think I've ever found any. No, not at all. Nope, not yet. There it is. Big green splodge. Oh yes, the blue atmosphere. Nitrogen can make for some really nice atmospheres. I remember landing on a planet. Look at this planet though, it just looks amazing. We landed on a planet once with a nitrogen atmosphere and it just looked incredible. The screenshots were just fantastic. And it was ringed, as I recall. It was a ringed nitrogen planet. Alright, this looks beautiful. That would make a nice screenshot, I believe. Hence my new ha hazard ship. Oh! This has got a hazard ship kit. Would that make me, like... If I had a multi-crew, we could be called the Dogs of Hazard. Hmm. Just the good old boys. Woof. Woof. Never meaning no harm. Right, there's a there's a trench there. I wonder if there's any like this this trench here. Is there any good stuff in there we can have a look at? The dogs of hazard. One of my probes was a little bit too low. Let's see if it still maps everything. Surface scan by 50%. Uh, mileage. Surface I actually don't know uh, hands at all. Meter on hollow is, yeah, that's super close and super quick. Oh, yeah, Dr. Ross, yeah. But forgive me if I'm wrong here. Isn't angry? Angry, you know uh, what you told me before. Oh, it's only from Tequila. Yeah, that's it. So, is Dr. Anthony Ross the same as the other Dr. Ross that left Frontier recently? Is that the same one? You know what I'm talking about, Angry, right? Uh, okay, we need thrusters. I wonder if it's the same one. Or it might be just a relation. Orbital flight engaged. But the Dr. Ross that left. I'm getting into dodgy territory here. I've got to be careful what I say. Because the Dr. Ross that left was female. And Dr. Anthony Ross. But. Ah, okay. Different people. Right. You know where I was going with that one, Angry, right? I was just wondering if that was the before and the after. Yeah. No, I'm not thinking of Sally. No. <laughs> I have to be careful broaching on subjects because <laughs> I don't know where the line is. Yeah, K. 
I was wondering whether K and Anthony are the same person, so... I don't know, put two and two together. Guys, here look. So we're looking for Fontkulua Lapida. So let's go into Codex again. Something I should have done last time. I just want to. Uh, I think I know which one it is. Lapida. I think I know which one it is, but I want to be sure. Was it that one I thought it was? Yes, because it's the only one that looks like that. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. The one I want to find, which I've never found yet, is this one, Digitus. One is a programmer. Okay. So is the, uh, I'm assuming then that the name is just coincidental, the Ross name is just coincidental then. Okay, anyway. Let's get down and check out the surface. She's looking pretty, pretty good. No prizes for guessing where the sun is. There it is. Hence the ref reflection. Now, the bacteria as well. That's going to be a good one to get if we can get it because it's valuable. Oh, plenty. Okay, and the distance on these is 500 meters. So I want to. And there's some bacteria on my right. And we've got. We've got plenty over there. So I'm going to point my ship to some in the distance and knowing that I've got a load on the left we're going to try and get landed here. Hopefully. Or just close. Close by. Let's try and stay close by. Cheers, Angry. Heading that the nose is pointed at is 96, so as long as I keep that in mind. Then scanning these monteculiwas um, shouldn't be too much of an issue. I'm going to have to get a screenshot here, I think, because I want one for my next thumbnail. Now, I've got to be careful how I angle this, because... Do I do this one, or do I do the ones over there? I think this one, and I want to get the one that's closest to the ship. But it keeps stowing my... There we go. It keeps stowing the turret. Okay, so we'll scan this one that's closest. Just one second. All oh, right. <laughs> I just saw the photo. Yep. Okay. Let's put that to bed. Totally different person. <laughs> oh boy. Treat me like a fool. So now we gotta get 500 meters. Let's just get 
back up the SRV in a moment. Because I forgot to do my screenshot. I just want to do a quick one. So I just want to have him, yeah, I guess just looking here. Very shadowy. And my, my little bumpy tire tracks. Too cluttered, isn't it? This a bit too cluttered. Let's take a big one of that. Good night, Ian. Have a good evening, sir. Right, let's go and do sample two. And we can always manage the inventory as well. We can do that. So all we need now is 500 meters in, in this direction. Is this going to be enough? Slippy, very slippy ground. It's not going to be enough, guys. It's not going to be enough. I've got no grip here at all. 290 meters, that is. Maybe. That one on the hill. Gotta be. 498 meters. Let's have a look, see if it's scannable. Yes, just, well, him and him. Minimum distance reached. Yeah, just though, you literally on the 500 meter mark. Meters from previous sample. And now we go over to where the ship's pointing. get our third sample and then we know we've got bacteria as well there it is there's the bacteria I've just realized just a little joke thing all the players who whinge at elite dangerous where, where do they all live Salty Towers. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if you know Faulty Towers, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Minimum distance we just about on the limit as well here. Traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Do, 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 do. And then back over to the bacteria. These nitrogen atmospheres do make for some of the nicest uh, views, I think, because of the sky. And we can relate to the sky color as well, can't we? The blue. Right, so back over to the bacteria, if I can remember exactly where it was. It's a fairly big patch. I think it's just on my right hand side. That's a big splodge. That is a, a big splodge of backy. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a big bit. This is easily gonna knock me into the next ranking now, for sure. It's what we did already today, and now this. Easily. So now we need to find second and third bacteria. The second one... Is, well, there's another one here, but it's not going to be enough distance. Not by a long joke. No, we need to double that. Do we have any bacteria splodges over here? Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500. I mean, the, the font Aculia is everywhere. Certainly no shortage of that. Okay, let's see if I can go and have a look in the style of the Mandalorian. Elephant snot, exactly. Yeah, new kit is cool, isn't it? Okay, so Mandalorian style then. Is that one? I think so. It's small. Is that the one we came past before? Where's my ship? Okay, so I think 57 degrees heading is a possibility for one. I mean, it's a guess. I, I think I spotted one. I can't be a hundred percent sure. I did. I did. And it's well out, out of the way of the first scan. We do it this way? I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Second scan coming up. And we'll try and find the third one via SRV as well. Sampled you shall be. So we'll head off in a different direction. Let's say, where's my ship? Yeah, let's go. Let's go behind the ship, so to speak. Now we're driving into the sun, so I don't think that's going to hamper seeing one. Minimum distance reached. It might though. Traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Driving into the sun with that reflection on the ground. I don't know. Maybe it is hampering things a little. Let's do another. Another Mandalorian jump. Awesome views though. Ah, there we go. 262 degrees, we have it. The last bacteria. Right there. If I may, I'll drive straight past the bloody thing. There it is. That's it. Done. <laughs> Not bad at all. Right. Back to the ship. Six hundred meters away. That's it. That, 
That ship kit looks awesome, doesn't it? So much more detail on the ship now. And the ship kit killed me. Death by ship kit. And I also like that the parts of the ship kit have blended in with my gleam livery. Um, and I think it suits it. I think it would also look pretty epic in chrome, but those bits on the side, um, like if you had a chrome conda, I think it would be nice if, let me get a bit further back. Was it those bits I was thinking? Yeah, yes. So these, if they were in black, well, the ship was in chrome, you know, and maybe these bits as well in black. But I think they wouldn't do that. I think it would just be all chrome. Look at the reflection of the real lights in the ice. Eh? Wait, it shimmers on the bumpy tracks as well. Very cool. Very nice. Hello, Zontar. How are you, sir? <laughs> yep. Ah, oh, the ship looks great, though. I like I like the kit. I think it looks nice. I wasn't sure whether I would fit all of it, all the hazard kit, but or whether I would even like it. But I, I do. I really do. I like how much extra detail is it, that it's added onto the whole the whole ship. So. Skedaddle. I love nitrogen atmosphere planets. They just look so good. Alright, let's escape the mass lock and jumbody jump jump. It is a ship kit for a Conda Zontar. Yes, it is. You've been playing all day with trains and tracks and Lego. Oh, bugger. If I'd known, I would have come over. Oh, I wanted to show you before we jumped, but the camera decided to go nuts. Looks like it's straight out of, um, like a Star Wars ship or something. Looks like we're not on target for the jump. Let's see, my ship changes colour every two bloody minutes. Just want to get some screenies while we're here. not quite at full throttle. That's another good way of preventing the jump. Just don't be at full throttle. <laughs> With the homies. <laughs> oh, Skype came into my mind today for some reason. I haven't used it for years. But that, the noise of the Skype when it rings and it goes... Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. And it took me a couple of seconds to think, where's that come from? I knew it was a ringtone and I thought, where's that from? And then, like a couple of seconds later, I remembered, I thought, oh yeah, it's Skype. Funny how you mentioned it today as well. Okay, we have another virginal system here. As we are now, officially, under 20,000. Here it is. There you go, guys. We're getting there. We've left the 20,000s behind. We are now officially closer to Seoul than it is to get to Colonia.
Um, yeah, it does have function in that it's it's got um, extra lights on it, and the lights actually work. This, we've got six extra lights, and they do they they give the yeah. new batteries. They do give you better uh, lighting. So uh, yeah. Other than that, though, it's just cosmetic. Forty seven landable with atmosphere. Okay, this is a bacterium ACs, only worth fifty thousand. I'll skip that. I'm gonna get a bit more picky now with my bios, even though I did lose a load and want to make up for it. I'll use the uh, the road to Exo Mastery, whatever it's called. I'll use that. System scan complete. Yeah, a little bit of rain today, yes. No, Beagle points in a completely different direction. <laughs> Plus, I've been there, done that. And they didn't have any t-shirts in stock, so I couldn't get those. There was a back order waiting to be delivered by fleet carrier. Two months. A Steam gift card? For for what? For this? Yeah, I went to Beagle Point and beyond. I went beyond Beagle Point uh, on on my Distant Worlds two trip. It's all documented on my channel. If you just look for the Distant Worlds, just type in Distant Worlds. I'm sure all the videos are there. And I do end up at Beagle Point, and then I do a couple of jumps after that, which you can only do via Jumponium, synthesizing extra jump range. You can probably get a bit further now if you have a fleet carrier. If there's any stars further out there, I don't know. I wouldn't think there was anything beyond 500 light years, though. But there may be something else that I couldn't reach that a fleet carrier can. Oh, she buys arcs? Oh, for the ship kit, of course. Yeah, I had a, f I had a fair few thousand already, so... I only had to do a little top-up to get this kit. So I was okay with that. I still find it very pricey though, for a ship kit. This thing, when you're in this, it's kind of looping back on itself, like as if you're in a, in a like you're inside a sphere or something. How have I done that? Stop, stop, stop. Why are we pl plotting to Sol? That's not where we're supposed to be going. We're supposed to be spanching. Hmm. Now, oh, where was I? Where was I going to? There. Taking me back to Seoul. 275 jumps, but that's without neutrons. If I include neutrons now. Five. Right, so we have... That's a neutron. So is that. 
and so is that one that's coming off. So there's at least three of the five that are neutrons. And two that aren't. Okay. Well, I think we can end there then. What we'll do is take these two jumps, do the three neutron jumps, and then that will put us in a system that we can carry on in the galaxy plotter from next time. And maybe get under 15,000 light years, or 14, or something along those lines. And before you know it, we'll be back in the bubble, baby. I'll be the bubble boy. <laughs> it's a Seinfeld reference, the bubble boy. Yep, Seinfeld indeed. Oops, it's the loops, not the moors. Wow, undiscovered stuff here. High metals and low metals. System body one complete. landable with atmosphere. Okay, this is Bacterium Cerberus Indigo. Oh, what's that's interesting. Have I ever that up here yet? Takes a while to get into this, doesn't it? Many clicks. I should set up a routine in uh, voice attack or something. So, it's bacteriums. Oh, yeah, we've already found some. It's worth 121,000, but I can go without. If I hadn't discovered any so far, if it wasn't blue, I would I would have done it. Let's go. Yeah, it's all right for you, Hans, but we're in old England. Check it, Zonta. You want to check it now or after the stream? So many windows open. Okay, Zonta, got the message. Right, let's just. Hold on. I need to get rid of some windows on my monitor because I've got so many open. There we go, that's better. Right. Let's de scan this. System scan complete. stars then. So I guess this next jump is the neutron. It is. Well, let's see what's in these next three systems. Yep. And we'll end up... Four, three, two, one. 
just... Well, 19,100 light years away. That means we'll have covered a little bit over 5,000... Uh, is it five? Yeah, 5,000. We'll have just done over 5,000 light years today. And considering that we were 24 away, that's a big chunk. It'll be interesting to see where about on the galaxy map we'll end up in the sector. I think we'll maybe be on the middle. have been looked at none of them so again it's on Spanch but it's just a drop-off thing <sighs> but nothing special here though no ammonias to make sure that the, the high metal contents are, that they're not or whether they are or not terraforming candidates and that one wasn't Just thinking again, just talking about the TV and stuff. Now that I've done Mandalorian and Boba Fett, I did plan to watch next the, again, the um, Force Awakens, just to stay on the Star Wars theme. I've seen it, I think I've seen it before. Um, should be able to watch it again. And then go through. Star Trek Discovery, because that's the one I'm down on. I only watched a few episodes of that and then stopped. So I need to catch up on that one. And then that will be my Star Trek stroke Star Wars sci-fi haven't watched yet pile complete. not choosing between <laughs> whether I prefer Star Wars or Star Trek. I ain't doing that. I like both. Yeah, but if you had to pick one, Rusty. No. I like that Star Wars is getting TV series is 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 series is is like Star Trek does. I like that. And I like that they're using the actors from the movies as well. Another plus point. And I'm, yeah, I've been enjoying it. Even though I've been late to the party with these series. Got there in the end, eh? Oh, there was another zoom out. Stupid mouse. <laughs> yeah, the expanse was amazing. Oh, hello. Rusty thanks you, Gumbopot72, for your kind donation of £25. Holy Just crap. in case I messed up on your GoFundMe page. Hoping we can get you an upgrade soon. Thank you, Gumbo. I don't know if you messed up on my thing. Uh, no. It's there. So that's that's twice now. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Oh, that's awesome. No, I think the problem is that the bloody figure on the live stream doesn't update. I don't know why. It's because it's taking it directly from a browser page, and that should dynamically update. 
Let me have a look. Thank you so much, Gumbomo. Appreciate it on on both. It'll all get applied to the same thing, so thank you. Like the the da -da 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 -da, that'll all go into the same pool. Um, let me try and update this to go into. This, this, there we go, that's where it's at. So yeah, thank you, Gumbo, for your very kind donation there. Much appreciated. Oh, this is awesome. I do have the best crowd, don't I? <laughs> I've said it all the time. And yeah, there's no two ways about it. Definitely. Legends. Yes, it's gonna happen. One way or another, it's gonna happen, guys. New hardware will be coming. And I'll, I'll unbox it, and I'll, I'll unbox it live. I'll build the computer live. That should be an interesting thing. Because I'll have to get my laptop and the webcam and then do the whole thing yeah and I'll have I know what's gonna ha happen I'll have people on the chat going no no Rusty don't do that put the put, <laughs> put the thermal paste on <laughs> I'll be having people t telling me no don't do this yeah it's gonna be epic Very, very curious to see the uh, the performance difference because I'm only changing the performance is going to come from CPU in the main and obviously faster RAM because I'm using RAM that's like a thousand megahertz slower than what I will be getting. Yeah, 58. 58's a nice one as well. But somebody mentioned to me about another one, which was the... It ended in 3D, something 3D, Ryzen. Might be a 5800X 3D or 3D, yeah. I also believe that's a, a good one, but I've, I've got my heart set on the 59. And it was you guys, I think it was Andy, that persuaded me to go AMD, because I've always been really Intel. But because, you know, it's this is more like like a a tight budget build, so to speak, then I have AMD's the cheaper option. And it performs well at the same time, so Yeah, I think it's good. There'll be a few firsts actually, because it'll I'll be going from air cooled Intel to water cooled. Water cooled uh, AMD. It's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting project, PC build project, but one that'll keep me gaming and streaming for a while, I hope. And then the next objective, of course, would be to improve the graphics card at some point. But I think when Nvidia bring out the 4 series, the 40 series, the um, I'm hoping that the price of the 30s are going to drop. Because the 3080 Ti right now is a thousand and forty nine pounds, you know, <sighs> which is like, <laughs> which kidney do you want? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like, it's out there. I'm hoping it drops quite a bit when the 4 Series comes out. Body B3. So but the 4 Series is probably going to be, like, just crazy performance. Can you imagine if they release something like a 4090 or something? The amount of gigaflops that thing's going to be doing. Or however it's m measured. 
Yeah, 3080 Ti. Nice. 5950. Yeah, 5800 XT 3D. Yeah, AM5. So this is it, you see. We'll get the we'll get the AMD chip and already it's going out of date because there's a new socket coming out. Uh, it's just ridiculous. You can't never keep up. But at least I'm going from su I'm going from super out to date to almost becoming the, not not out of date, but it's going to be the next like the the, the 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 thing that supersedes it is already ready to come out. You know. I hope my maybe you guys can tell me um, if I only switch like I've got the 2080 super. If I just switch from the Intel i7-6700 to the AMD 5900X, I'm going to be still okay on my power supply, right? Which is an 8 850. I have an 850 power supply. I think it's gold, gold or platinum or whatever it is. I'm not sure which one it is, to be honest. It's a good make. It's a good make. It's got fans on it that only come on when it gets hot. The fans never been in. The fans never come on. It's never come on. I, I don't know if it's broken or it's just never needed to. <laughs> I think it's never needed to, but I've never heard the fan come on. Right, let's have a look here. We have. Uh oh. Are we? What's the system we're in? Hyper GB0. Hyper GB0. Guys, we have a mother load here. Oh, maybe we don't. Damn you. On planets C2 and C4, there's only one bio. But the choice we've got here is either bacteria or stratum tectonicus. Oh. And we know how valuable those are. That means I have to go and have a look. So it's there and there. Please don't be far away. Oh, you bugger. Bacteria, I'm gonna not bother. Yeah, 850 plenty. Yes, your right hands just behind the top for the best value. You're, you're, that's absolutely right. Because the new tech is always like way overpriced because it's the new tech. That is very true. When do I think I would buy a new GPU? <laughs> I'll be old and grey. I, do, I don't know. I don't know aquatic. Uh, I don't know. Your... No idea. Yeah. I think though, as long as I'm getting decent frame rates, like I can, I can push at least thirty in Microsoft Flight Sim. In you know with with the Phoenix, let's say, because that's the most intensive. I can hit 30 with that, I'm happy. You know? As long as my my hardware can do that, and it keeps me at 60 and Elite Dangerous all the time, I'm, I'm happy with it. You know? Obviously, 3080 Ti would be like a dream, but if it performs, then yeah, if it performs to what I want, then that's great. Thank you, Gumbo. Member for eight months. Thank you so much, man, for the loyalty and the support. Yay. Thank you, man. That means a lot. I know I am old and grey. <laughs> But I mean, like, really older. Yeah. I 
I might get I'll have, I might have to wait until I get to a point where I can decide you know what I can function on one kidney you know there was a wasn't there was a case I remember there was a case of a guy in oh, I'm, oh, I'm gonna not bother with this there was a guy in China who sold he, he sold his he had his kidney out and sold it on the black market so that he could buy an iPhone and an iPad when they were new I think when they first came out that's just beyond cuckoo because that technology changes so fast and it becomes out of date so quick and you can't put your kidney back is Patreon better or Google? Patreon beats Google every time because Google takes 30% but actually, it depends in what sense, though. If it's like a donation thing, then it would have to be the, the blue text on the top of the screen, the stream elements. That would be the best way to go. If, it was a, if it's a one-off donation, then it's better with the blue. Because Patreon is, is recurring, just like the channel memberships. I don't know how does how does the sapphire compare with the 2080 super yeah cuz yeah if it's better performing I don't think I moved far enough away did I oh yes I did it's a neutron let's have a look I'm going in the wrong maps. I'm getting all distracted. There we go. That's what I wanted. We've got a ringed lava world. You won't see those too often. Should we? Let's go and check it out. Let's go and have a look at it. Because this is the last jump, apparently. And we are... Oh. Captain's Log. Where are you? Nothing's happened to Captain's Log. Is it not running? Shoot. Uh, Christoph says, this is my sixth week of frantically hunting for... I'm ho onion soup, right? <laughs> I can't seem to find any space that... Does anyone know where I can... Bunion soup? Trade you for some t-shirts. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thirty eighty. G Force now has a thirty eighty tier. Could try that. Yeah. Thirty eighty. Anything that's got a three in front is is good mind you there are some th 30 series cards that can't outperform the 2080 super i believe right isn't the 3060 slower than the 2080 super i can't remember exactly nor do i remember what i'm doing here oh yeah we're going we're going to the lava world lava world and have a look at that um yeah g-force has a 3080 tier i don't know what you, i'm not quite sure what you mean by a tier though you could try it as long as it isn't a twitch type game i'm not following you aquatic sorry man What's a 
Twitch type game anyway. Mine has a six in front. Yes, but I'm talking Nvidia. <laughs> give you bread with bunion soup. Apparently it's like a foot. Lava world, they don't come along every day. Do we check it for uh, hot spots? I know the planet's got hot spots, but uh, I game at two two five sixty by fourteen forty two K. Best with croutons, of course. <laughs> We have hotspots. Painite, Rod Plumsite, Platinum, Platinum, Painite, Platinum. <laughs> Don't need much of a system at all. Game streaming. Oh, I know what you mean, yeah. Where are we then? We're in... D5-8. There. Just getting it on my root plotter here. And... Should therefore be synthesized up. We are, 3.11. I think we should make this jump. We're okay on fuel. How we knock off... Oh, there's Captain's Log. Hello. Should we knock off another 300 light years? Hmm. I don't know how all that stuff works though, aquatic, you know. Like, do I do I get to play m my flight sim with my settings and my downloaded um, mods and stuff? I don't know. Yeah, thirty seventy. It's only thirty thirteen percent. Exactly. It's not that much. This is why you have to drop into the... For me, I want to drop in... want to drop into the TI range. But, like I say, anything with a, a 3 in front is... Isn't, well, 30, 80, 30, 90. But 90 is just... forget it, that's out of range. Thirty ninety is like expecting a Ferrari four eighty eight GTB to drop on my front doorstep. Ain't gonna happen. Unless somebody wants it washed. <laughs> Let's make this jump. Because if we do, guys. Distance to Sol will be 18,000. Yikes. You can play everything you 
your steam library. How does that work then? Why isn't everybody doing that? Mercedes had a good day today. They did. They did. Yeah, but they need more top speed though. If they had the top speed of the top two cars, I'm telling you, we'd be looking at something pretty exciting. But all things considered, it was amazing. Retirement equals happy old man. <laughs> Who's the happy old man, Hans? Yeah, how... I don't know, you might have to send me a message on Discord Aquatic to let me know what's what, what that's about. Might be worth giving it a shot. Please select the graphics card you wish to emulate. Yeah, 3060 Ti's are pretty good too. Yeah, the Ti's really just, they do add a, a good bit of um, oomph, you know, but at a price, that's the thing. You've got to balance the performance and price as well, you know. Right, we need to honk here. System scan complete. It's just stars here, unfortunately. Okay. And we are... 18,955 light years away. Let's take a look on the map, see where we are. Oh my god. And I believe we started here at B55. If this has got a fleet carrier in it, yeah, this is where we started today. Holy crumbs. And that system is, in fact, let's just find out, shall we? That's what we've covered today. 5,400 light years. Okay, we've not done as much exploration as usual. But just think of how much closer to the bubble we are. Whew. Fancy dropping in on that nebula, but it's, it's high up. But another one here, what's this one? NGC3, it's got an actual name, like as opposed to some weird, yeah, one of these weird ones. Let's have a look, see what the distance in there is. I have to get to it a bit better than this. All the stars are grey, I need to change the map. What are we looking at here? Oh, <laughs> if we do another stream like today, we could arrive here. Imagine. And this is the outer Orion Spur. And then the inner Orion Spur, and then we're home. Yeah, I would reckon another two or three streams if we keep going like this. <laughs> um. Storage based mining crypto, yeah. Yes, this is a problem, isn't it? Those miners with all the graphics cards, it's crazy. I've seen these rigs for sale, you know, they've got like five to eight graphics cards in a line, selling them for like, selling the mining rig for like 22,000 pounds or something. It's like, really? I don't know. I think the whole thing's just a load of tosh, really. If we plotted a route to here, 
including jet cones. Not as efficient as Spanch, but just as an idea. 76. Fifty-eight. Okay. <laughs> if that had been seventy-six, I would have been amazed. Fifty-eight jumps. Interesting. And my other ship still up there. Look. I wonder if it's got the hazard ship kit on it. Same ship as the one I'm in right now. Annie. It's a ghost ship. I would like to see what happens by having it shipped down, but the cost of having it shipped down is worth more than what the ship is. I'll just have to get Frontier to nuke it, but I don't want Frontier touching that ship until I am um, back in Shinrata and docked, because I do not want them getting it mixed up with... Um, with mine and blasting mine out instead so I want to cash in everything first you know and then let Frontier make the mistake not that they will <laughs> but they could so we need fuel Where are you? There we go. Yeah, but does the, when Nvidia discount the cards, that cost has then got to pass itself down to the shops and stuff like that. Because right now they're still over, like there's, there's still a thousand. It's still one oh four nine pounds for a ten eighty Ti. You know, and I think that's the Asus. Uh, it's an Asus one. Can't remember the exact name of it now. Um, you own the kit, but we'll have to do each one manually. So I've kind of lost track there, Hans. Which kit are we talking about? Oh, you own the kit, but have to do each one manually. Okay, I know what you mean. Right, I'm with you. Yeah. Oh no, it's it's come down a lot, but it's still way out of my league. Yeah. And I'm not selling the car. I could sell the car and get a killer PC, <laughs> but I can't, I, I, I need transport. Right, I'm going to, I was going to end here, but where are we? We're in 3-3, so we'll go to, we'll plot a route, so we'll do four more. is the next one and we'll plot a route here rather than oh but wait a minute we've already neutroned haven't we are we supercharged yeah we are okay damn all right let's just let's just go i'm hoping just to find a place to settle down and land What's the big thing happening in happening in 2025 then? Yeah, it is the exact same ship. I'm just wondering if they get rid of that one, will it blitz this one out as well? But I know what Frontier will say. Oh, we can't put it back. We can't give you the engineering, and we can't put it. But we can give you the credits. Yeah, but they'll have to give me the credits and the materials. 
that I need for all the engineering to rebuild this ship. They have to be sure that they can get rid of the one that's up there without getting rid of this one. Do you guys realize that in every system we've visited on this trip, there's, there's been a nav beacon? Hmm. It's on my dashboard, but nevertheless, right, I'm too close to this thing. Come on. I'm following the shadows on my bobble head things. That's how I know where the star is. See the shadows? No. All right, let's just pile in here. Okay. All right. In that case, screw you, and we'll just make our way into a new region called Pleely. 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 Yes, next jump, but I'm not already supercharged, so please replot that. Should be four jumps. Five. Okay, dokie. Thirty eighties under eight hundred dollars. Are they? Sure, what they are here. <laughs> Buying new PCs in twenty twenty five for what reason, though? Just because of I don't know, new hard was it new hardware? What, what's the big What's the big thing happening? Okay, 21. Let's take a look in the system, see what we have. Fine. Looks like Looks like I've got Captain's Log running twice now. Because I've got the widget twice. What the hell's going on here? Ah, it disappeared off of my screen. There we go. Fixed it. Yes, it disappeared off, of, off the screen. Looking for atmospheric landables. You can hear the the sound effects there of the planet, just that bubbling that bubbling sound. I wonder if there's anyone who could just listen to the sound and tell you what you know what all the planets are all of them like that one just a bit of bubbling that's icy i mean the ones that are obvious are the clusters 40b7 yay 
landable with atmosphere. Looks an interesting uh, texture. No bacteria there, but. He's making me cry when you remember what you paid for a 3070 Ti. Yeah. To secure boot their PC. Yeah. This is like Microsoft wants to just take over your computer now. There'll be people hacking around that though, Mark. Don't worry. They already hacked around it with Windows 11. It's ridiculous, all this. Like... The consumer should get to decide how secure their PC is, but now Microsoft is saying, well, it's our software, so, you know, we should get to decide how secure it is, because we don't want all these problems, blah, blah, blah. That'll be a very good operating system, then, if it needs all this. It's ridiculous what Microsoft are trying to do with people. <laughs> Getting as bad as the car companies that are trying to, uh, are trying to scam people with um, by having to subscribe to car features like heated seats, you know, BMW. Problem with Linux is you. I can't go. You can't go onto Linux and you know have this. Have what I have now. All my games and and stuff like that. Body B four. Landable with atmosphere. But yeah, I I hope like if Microsoft do do that. Um, and what if they choose not to? Can you can you boot your PC unsecured? Will they allow that? Because they can't stop you from booting your PC, I, I suppose. Because their their software doesn't get loaded until after the BIOS, so they don't they shouldn't be able to control. I don't know. They'll they'll only get away with it if the consumers accept it and let it go and don't resist it they have to resist it it's the only way to stop this crap just complete boycott of the whole thing yeah and companies like google can come in and make an operating system when they've got the google uh what is it is it a laptop or a phone they've got now I don't know. Not the Pixel. <coughs> isn't, isn't there a... Or is it Chrome I'm thinking of? Chromebook. Same thing, right? Yeah, they're getting more and more dictatorial now with this operating system of Windows. Everybody should just stick on Windows 10 and just boycott the software, boycott the new Windows software. And then they'll make everything incompatible. It has to be resisted, man. People have to resist it and revolt against it. It's the only way. The more people sit back and just accept this crap, the more they'll do to you. They c they'll only get away with what, p what the public lets them. Simple as that. Because the one thing they need is money. 
And if the consumer's not spending because of that crap, same with BMW. I think people should boycott buying BMWs because of this subscription thing. Especially, they only tri they trialed it in um, South Korea, I think it was, and now it's in the UK. Paying subscriptions for things that you've already like they they fit heated seats into your car, so you have it already in the car. But if you you know you can pay a. a an amount on top to have it turn, you know, to have it on all the time, which is a feature that we've always had, you know, where if you buy the heated seat option, you can use it whenever you like. But now you buy the option and then you can buy the right to use the bloody thing, or you can buy a monthly subscription where you pay a certain amount per month, and, you, and if you don't pay, they'll you can't switch the heated seats on. So now they can actually cr control it remotely. It's all about big brother man and control. Control Microsoft, BMW, all these companies, they just want to control people. And we're being bought off with gadgets and stuff, so we're all distracted and just letting them do it. Too busy playing on our phones. If they could charge for oxygen, they would. Don't worry about that, they would. I remember when I was a kid, they used to, we used to have a joke going around saying, you know, because we used to just drink water from the tap. And we the joke used to be, hey, if they could charge for bloody water, for bottling water, they would. It was a joke back then. And look now. <laughs> Surface scan by fifty per cent. Okay, so what do we have? So, what? Oh, bollocks. So, let's see what we have. So, the stratum is tectonicus. So this is the this is the big one, Frutexa metallicum, bacteria, which will be al alcinonium, and fungoida, either cestis or gelata. So we're looking at. Let's go start at bacteria. So bacteria, hundred. I'm I'm going to round the numbers up. Hundred and twenty thousand. Uh, 120,000 or 206,000 depending on the species stratum 806,000 and that 118 so there's over a million to be had here um, but I think what I'm going to do is land where the stratum is and we'll start gathering samples next time yep everything's moving to subscription started with YouTube yeah and people are just going to accept it aren't they they're just going to sit back and just you know just blindly take it take it up the uh, up the rear end thank you Rick for your subscription appreciate that thanks a lot happened. Click something on OBS, there we go. Orbital flight engaged. If we start to let them get away with it though, then it'll never end. Everything will be going that way. Because as soon as one company sees one company getting away with it, they'll do it as well. I think Toyota are doing it, aren't they? Subscription based with something. I can't remember what it is. But 
it's it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous idea and like the heated seats thing with BMW. It's completely unnecessary. Nobody asks for it. Nobody needs it. Nobody. The only people that gain from it are them. More money. You pay us every month to have a feature that we've already added into your car. It's ridiculous. Stick with the older cars. Don't buy modern, don't buy new cars, buy the older ones. Get a second hand one that's a few years old. That's why I'm happy with mine. It's 20 years old, but it, it's not like built like today where everything, all the parts are plastic and in the engine bay, you know, and a hundred computers. I think my car's got like, I don't know, 20, 23 computer modules in it. Now they've got like hundreds. And they can control so many things now. So much more to go wrong. And now in America, they're trying to, they're even trying to take uh, the right to repair the right to repair your own car. I'm trying to take that away. Yes, remote unlock. Now they backed off on it. I think I heard that. Yeah, I think it was on Scotty Kilmer's channel. I think I heard that they did back off on it. And that's because people protested against it. So that's what I'm telling you, man. That's what, what it takes. You just got to... Customers have to let them know how they feel about it. You know? It's, it's pathetic. Right, what's outside here? Now, we do have... Uh, Tectonic ass here, right? Yep. That's all. Oh, there's a bacteria there as well, just behind. Some more tectonic ass behind. Uh, another load over there. Another load over there. So yeah. No problem finding tectonic ass. There's another bacteria right there. Tectonic ass is easy to find, or stratum in general is easy to find. Ponticulio are the same. There's another. But we need to find the bacteria splats that are furthest apart from each other. We can hopefully get two. But I'll do this on the next stream, I think. It definitely looks a bit more battleship. It looks like it's about to transform into something else. <laughs> it's a very different ship with a very different shadow now to what it used to look like. Yeah, Annie's got some guns. Well, not literally, but... Quite a bit more detail now. Uh... Yep, 97 Saab. The right to repair. Past Cong... Oh, the right to repair. Okay, so that's a good thing, right? The one that... Or was it the... When you say the right to repair past Congress, you're talking about that... We, that the public or mechanics have the right to repair cars that... Right? You don't have to take it to the dealer. Because you know, once they get that, when it has to go back to the dealer, then they can then they can charge you anything they like. How can you pass a law where you can tell someone what, what they can do with their car? It's like trying to tell a woman what she can do with her body. Oh dear, did I just go there? I mean, really. <laughs> it's ridiculous. 
Yep. If you've ever watched the George Carlin bit where he talks about the owners of the country and, yeah, the people that own the country, America, he's talking about, and that they all they want is obedient workers. They don't want people with critical thinking and, you know, if you, I don't know what the sketch is, but it, it's, it's on YouTube. I don't know which exact, which one it is exactly, but it's, uh, he's so right. It's, it's, he's so right in what he says. It passed for the good of the consumer. Good. Good. It was a ridiculous thing to even consider to have people not given the right to work on their own cars, for God's sake. You end up, people just won't want to buy cars. I mean, when we get to electric cars, it's going to all change anyway. And they're forcing us that way, aren't they, to electric cars, even though it's not the best solution for the environment. Electric cars aren't the environment answer that people think it is. Yeah. Me, I'd probably go... I'd probably say hydrogen would be the best, the best solution. But no, they've picked electric, and now they're going down that route. Well, good luck to them. It's going to bite them in the ass. I can't get rid of Captain's log now. Now I've got a widget, and I can't, <laughs> I can't bring the, the thing up, the um, interface. So I can't shut it down. Let me see. No. Um, I know you guys can't see it on the screen there. But it is. It's there and it's not moving. But it says distance to solid is 18, 18635. Trying to, oh, I need to be inside, don't I? I'm going to try and confirm that. So get that off the screen. Oops. That didn't take. There we go. 18635, it says. Yep. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Just out of curiosity, with a jet cone, how many jumps to Sol? Well, it was 275 last time, wasn't it? So maybe 270. Come on, baby. Come on. Alt tab. Yeah. Probably behind. 214 jumps. Wow, we've come down a lot. Uh. Yeah, it's not in the, it's not in any of my tabs. Doesn't matter, I'll just close it in the task manager. It's not a problem. Uh, there we go, end task, good night. Yeah, 214 jumps using the normal uh, way. With, with the inbuilt plotter. So imagine imagine how much uh, Spanch would get it down to. Should we have a look? Should we? Let's see. I don't know if the system that I'm in will be in Spanch though. Let me see if I can bring this up for you guys. Okay. So I need to go into the galaxy plotter. This is the one for the exobiology, but it has to be done in the sector that the bubble is in. In other words, in a Orion Spur, I think. Because when I tried it up in Hawking's Gap, it plotted one route in Hawking's Gap, and then it said I had to do 325 jumps for the next one. So I'm gonna wait till I get into the inner Orion Spur, and then we'll try this. So, into the gal look, ammonia world route. Oh, yes, we should be looking at those. 
Galaxy Plotter. So let's see if where I am right now is... Uh, so is here. So it's prove hyper fn dash i b oops b it's not there is it? I need b10 zero. These are all d's. So what I can do is look at the neutron star that is closest oh there's one there from the other Spanish list unless of course this one is here D5 oh but D4 and D1 I need D5 Okay. Hold on a minute. Honestly, maneuvering this galaxy map is a nightmare. So what I'm going to do is we are... I'm going to just, just do something in the game. Sec. Okay, so we're 226 away from that system. So in here, we'll put that system in here, that one. That's our Sol system. Destination, Sol. Ship build. Okay, so for ship build, guys, what we do is we open, um, in fact, I can just go into Coriolis. So Let me just nip back into here. Coriolis. Builds. Annie. That one. Export. Copy. Okay, so what you're seeing now is the export here. Just copied this information by exporting there, click export, copy the text back here, paste the text in and if it doesn't calculate then you have to just click this already supercharged and that makes it work. Okay it's off. So it's got to beat 214 jumps, 150, okay good guess. Yeah, it's all right, Hans. I've got my own views, but I'd, I probably shouldn't air them. Got to stay neutral. <laughs> Any more guesses before it calculates how many it's going to be? Mark says 150. I'm going to... Oh, it's done. 80, 80 jumps, guys. And every yes in this last column is a neutron star. So that one isn't. We've got two, three, four. F only four jumps out of the 80 that are not neutrons. Jackson's Lighthouse, look. Straight into Seoul. How about that? From 214 jumps down to 80. That shows how still inefficient the route plotting is on, uh, on the galaxy map. Yeah. Wow. What about that, guys? 80 jumps. That's easily doable in one stream. 
But it'll be a frigging boring stream though. Jump, supercharge, jump, supercharge, jump, supercharge, refuel, jump, supercharged. <laughs> and rinse and repeat. Yeah. Estimated time, two hours. I, I ignore that. It'll be a bit longer. I think it'll be a bit longer than two hours. So these are all the neutrons. And this is every time we refuel. So these are all possible fast moving neutrons. But two here, look, refuel and refuel. The reason you have to do this, I don't know why you would, yeah, maybe you have to refuel here because you can't make this jump. But you need to refuel there again because if you don't, you'll never get to this jump or to this system. So that's why you can get two in a row like that. Man, 80. That's how close we really are, guys, to, to home. And every time we make jumps here, the less that's going to go down. Or the <laughs> that's not the right way to say it, is it? The less it's going to go down. The more it's going to go down, but we'll have less distance. I know what I mean. <laughs> All right. So, guys, I'm going to cut it off from here. Uh, it's been another five hours. That's three streams of five hours, I think, or something along those lines. Um, territory I shouldn't really be getting into, but... Yeah, let's call this weekend a one-off then for those streams, because it's, it's a bit too much. I don't want to get back to what happened last time. So... I want to thank you all, guys, for all of your support and especially for the donations for the GoFundMe. Um, so much appreciated, like you can't even believe. Um, yeah, don't even know what to say. Um, but something good will come out of it at the end and it'll be thanks to you guys, as, as not for the first time. So, thank you all for the company as well. Uh, couldn't do it without you guys. Wouldn't do it without you guys at all. And uh, that's it. I just don't want to forget anything. I think I have said everything, right? Yeah. Have a good rest of the evening or day or whatever. Um, hello, Bloodling and Robert Kirk. Uh, uh, yeah, we've made some damn good progress today. Over five and a half thousand light years covered. And a little bit of exploration. So next time we'll try and balance it out a bit more between exploration and jumping. All right, dudes and any dudesses that may be out there. Until next time, take good care. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Bye for now.